Hi, I'm Terry Ryan, and you're listening to the Nasty Knuckles Podcast. You're listening to Nasty Knuckles, the Hockey Outlaws Podcast, with your host, Terry Nasty Sotomayor and former Philadelphia Flyer Enforcer Riley Cote as they go behind the scenes with your favorite NHL players. Time to face off. All right, welcome back. What's happening, Nasty? Well, what's up, Rega Rega? Glad to get you back in the uh, stew here after we just waited two and a half hours from your last uh, phone call. Oh, <laughs> two and a half hours. Uh, well, it felt, felt like it. Baller, even when Debo starts talking, you take oh, a long yeah. time, yeah, boys. My like bad. Kidding around. Hey, coming off a huge controversial win in men's league. Um, oh, yeah. Actually, it really wasn't, but it was, but it wasn't. Called Toronto, got the view. Oh yeah, Peelzy. I sent <laughs> I sent Timmy Peel, our good friend, the Vidzy, and he said no goal. No goal. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, had a, had fun. Just gave you such a sick dime in the slot, and you fanned on it. Yeah. You did what I would do. You didn't really fan on. You were kind of backing up, but uh, it was a good. Game. It was a whiff. It's, it was it was kind of a whiff. Uh, but you had to get back into old skates because you you know like. So it happens to you leave your skates, gloves, and uh, helmet oh, in, in, in your the car, car in South Philly. Yeah, and your car gets broken is, into. I guess that is what brand happens. Brand new wheels, two times used. Mm, back I didn't even know ones. you used them twice. I thought it was once. Yeah, well. Um, but either way. But big championship game this weekend. Yeah. They have a uh, guest head coach coming in uh, for is the it game. Confirmed? We'll see. It's not confirmed. We're, oh, we're, we we're working to, on we it. We're working uh, on it. can't show our hand too much. Here. No, no, no. No, no. I don't want to give the, old, uh, the other team a... Sniff about who our coach no, is. They no, might bring someone that. else in, but uh, always it. a good game against Rolling Rock. Uh, I know they were pissed, but the puck was not across. If it was across the line, you couldn't tell because it was under Joey's pads, and you can't say it's in if you don't see it's in. That's right. And it's funny if you watch the video, we'll actually give it to Baller. The ref says yeah, no, no. and then Joey goes to get up, and he kicks his foot back, and then of course the puck yeah, went in. But says goal. boys were sour. It's yeah. tough, but we we got screwed last year when they kicked Joey out of the game. Oh yeah, because the guy had started some shit. So anyway, it whatever. Happens. We Men's move league on. controversies. Men's league controversies. We're going to have a big night. We want everyone there. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> it should be it's a packed be a night. house. It's going to be. I a know Debo is calling all the broads. He he's got in that phone, which it's it's a it's a lot. Yeah. Um. And Baller will be there. So uh, anyway, that's this Sunday. Can't wait. Oh yeah. Six thirty start time or something like that. You better be ready, nice. Oh, I'll be ready. Cut, I couldn't I be any worse than I was. I shouldn't say I can't be because then I will be. But I had a tough game. Um, a couple good dishes. Yeah, that was about couple, the end of it. I, t- I remember I, I told you, I asked though. the ref at one time, you have a right-handed stick? Because I think yeah. maybe I should play right-handed at this point. Anyway, since we last met, Flyboys have dropped or dropped. Dropped. Rolled five yeah. in a row. They've dropped teams. Yes, they have. <laughs> uh, five in a row. Um, starting, I, I got to give a little bit of credit, I think, to Debo and Baller because they were at the Montreal game when they won in a shootout. And I heard Debo... Ripped the shirt off. It was nasty knuckles right across oh, his chest, yeah. and the boys get the did boys they come through up. in a shootout win. Mm-hmm. Um, it all seriously, in all seriousness, though. Then you you go on a road, a pretty tough road trip, man. Like any road trip's tough. You're going to other buildings, but you, you beat the Wild in OT. Yeah. Um, really good Jets team who was on yeah. Fire. I know they were what eight, eight in a row, row or something, yeah, something crazy, something crazy like that. And then they go into St. Louis, beat beat the Blues, who've been playing well. Um, and then come home last night, and I mean, you know, talk about like a coach knowing his team and, and having a feel he uh, a feel for the team. He gave them two days off. Yeah, I know they did not practice, I and know. they went and and they dominated. That was wise. They dominated that game I last sh- night. I mean, realistically, it was twenty-one to one in shots. Uh, me and Baller were talking about that, like. I don't know. They got their second shot of the game, 1340 left or somewhere around that. Yeah. I mean, that's a team that's four-checking hard. I'm talking about the Flyers. I mean, they played great yeah. last night, and, and we might have saw a goal of the year last oh, night. Oh, I mean, Danny Savard-esque uh, by He's our boy fire. Owen Tippett. He is on fire, and he shot a seed. His first goal off a of faceoff, just an yeah. absolute bomb. 
uh, over the shoulder. But uh, the Frosty had a game. He's the number one star. That's yeah. my boy. You know that. Um, fun to watch right now. And it's, yeah. it's hard not to talk playoffs. Everyone is on every network, every social media you see, man. I mean, don't want to jinx them because we've, we've done that in the past. But they're just – Say it again. It's it's probably getting uh, boring to say, but like, they're just hard to play against, man. Yeah. And they make you play. If you're gonna beat them, you you got to earn it. Yeah, that's it. The pesky Flyers. I mean, they're playing fast and hard, and fast, I mean, man. they're finding greasy ways to win games. I mean, like the you said, the road the road trip slamming out a few of those those games. Oh. Um, they're all towing in the right direction. Yes, same direction. And I mean, we we keep saying the same exact thing. I feel, but. Um, Relentless. relentless, just relentless, and they just keep f- climbing. Yeah, they're second, second spot now. Yeah, getting two points out of the first. Yeah, like, it's, it's who, amazing. Who, who, man. who would ever imagine this? No one, no one. Um, and, and it wasn't being negative no, either. It's just, just what you're expecting going realistic. into a rebuild, and it is a legit rebuild. I, I had heard Danny and Jonesy talking this week, and you know they got some tough decisions. Actually, I heard Torch talking about it as well with Ashland oh, yeah. um, uh, yesterday. There's a little interview, and, it, and they got some tough decisions to make. And one of the the things that Tort said, man, is that you got to be careful. You can't fall in love as far as players because yeah. you're going to have to make moves, and it's going to be hard. So I thought that's the first time I think I've ever heard that in hockey. Like, don't fall in love because your team, it's hard to say, oh, let's move this guy. Let's move that when you're playing like this. Yeah. Now we got a lot of season left. But I thought that was really uh, interesting that he said that because – they are going to have to make some decisions in a couple more months. Hopefully we're still in this this spot and they're playing this way. But uh, like you said, it, they're, they're just fun to watch. They, they You can tell there's a true love for each mm-hmm. other in that room and on mm-hmm. the ice. Yeah. Um, Which is probably the biggest the biggest thing, right? Yeah. I mean, the most important piece, the chemistry, right? Exactly. Because you look at teams that have tr- over time have won. Obviously, great talent. They have a couple franchise players, but it's the glue. It's like the energy that yeah. keeps them all together. And can go into this season, like on paper, they're, they're a pretty good team, right? They right. got Coots back. They got yeah. Cam Atkinson back. And, you know, the, move a couple guys get a couple guys but still like you know you, we wouldn't think this type of right energy and performance but together like they are a legitimate team like, yeah they look for like sure. a team and, and, and anything's possible when you're glued like that you're right and and then you know going on that road trip you take take coots and drysdale out for yeah. a couple games there right and you're still dominating the I games know. and still come out winning that's a team mm-hmm. like that you know a lot of teams do that i understand that but, you know, you, you see they're not playing, you're like, oh, man. You know, like, because it's, especially Coots, like, he is oh, yeah. probably, in my opinion, the most important player on that mm-hmm. team. I really believe that, like, just what he brings and the, and the type of player is. I know there's a lot of guys that are bringing it, and there's a lot of glue guys there. But um, Coots is, to me, one of the biggest reasons we've seen this turnaround. Yeah. But, but it's not just him. It's everyone. Yeah. Like you said, they're all pulling the same way. Um, they get down, they keep coming, mm-hmm. they get up. They played the right way last night. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I think uh, Bush was saying it like they just they they got the lead. Uh, they get scored on. That's tough for a goalie too. You don't see any shots, and then you finally get one or two, and, and you know yeah. the one goes one goes in. But after that, they played the right way. Yeah, and, and they come away with a you know five one win. So yeah. it's. So much fun to watch, man. It really, really is. So Yeah, good buzz we'll for the see. city with the yep. Eagles out and Flyers are, are the team now. Yeah, they are. Anyway, Cam Atkinson finally got the monkey yep. off his back there. He's uh, had yeah, a few, nice about three that. goals, I think, yeah, since he scored. And um, Austin Matthews in Toronto quickly. Fourth hat trick. Talk about a guy who makes it look easy <laughs> and strong and, like, like incredible it's like crazy. the way he moves and it, it and is just it, the size they, but it's just i just want to make a quick comment a couple pods maybe two pods ago rig said 45 goals for matthews he's on pace for 71 <laughs> you didn't say that though you said 40 <laughs> no <laughs> that, yeah no you're right though this guy yeah. he's he's on fire but uh quickly with toronto uh, they're saying sheldon keeps on a hot seat a little bit I here. Bet. I think they've lost a few in a row now, ball or four or five in a row, something like that. Um, I was reading this morning that uh, he's, he, I guess he called some guys out the other day, but like to me, if you're the head coach, man, you have that right to do it. I mean, there's, I understand there's ways to do it in a room. It wasn't like he, 
he did, I don't feel like he buried anyone with his statements. I, I did see it. But, um, I mean, sometimes you want to try to, you know, get them going a little bit. And I saw Danny Boyle talking about it yesterday on the network. Um, and he said, eh, he could have her. You know, he, he said basically what I just said. Like, sometimes there's a need for it if you really got to get. Well, I feel like he really has to do something now. Because, yeah. Well, um, that team, you look at that team. Jam, I mean, yeah. So anyway, yeah, you gotta um, save those th- moments for like desperate times. Yeah, because you only have a few, few exactly. of them, <laughs> and if you use them too early, you, you, they're not gonna be yeah. u- useful when you do try and use them. But um, yeah, could be a little, a lot of pressure from that yeah, media. The, the, yeah, the, there's so much pressure anyway. But uh, man, anyway, uh, <laughs> moving on to the Oilers, oh. uh, West twelve straight. Are you kidding me, Nobber? Nobber, what are you doing, Nobsy? Well, He's got him going. We got boys. reunited with McJesus. What do you exactly. expect? I know it's crazy. Um, Twelve in a row, man. That's yeah, that's, that's, no that's joke. a lot. That's, that's a no lot joke. of wins, man. Um, they're actually I've watched a couple of their games lately. They're they're Fun buzzing, man. Watch, they got yeah. down the other night two nothing. Came back. It was Toronto. They came back and won four yeah. two. But uh, our good buddy Justin Williams, yeah, ducked in into the Carolina Hurricanes as Hall he, of fame, should. he should. My God, Christ. is he in the Kings Hall of Fame? Yeah, yeah. I know, right? Yeah, He'd which be a couple. one should he should he not be in? Yeah. Uh, Mister Game Seven. Congrats to you, yes. Willie. Good we gotta man. get him on. We gotta get Willie. Yeah, on. we do. He's he's such a good guy, man, and. Um, it's a shame he never really got to stay here, but he didn't play the right way, mm. if you know what I mean. <laughs> in some Played well eyes. enough to, <laughs> yeah, he to, did all right. to move around and win some cups. Yeah, he sure did. Um, Corey Perry. Yeah, he's on the map. He's on the map he's again. Back. He's back. Um, some teams interested. We'll see what happens there. Yeah. Um, good for him, I guess. I'd, uh, I'd pick that guy I up. I would take that all guy day on long, my team, man. man. Going he to the playoffs, a man. Prick to play against. Yeah, boys. he's exactly what you want. Um, and then uh, Zigzy. Oh, he's Zigzy. out. He's out, so Flyers aren't getting him. Six Flyers are not getting him right now. He's, <laughs> he's, he's out 68. He had Torch told, I know Torch told you the other day he wants that kid bad. Oh, <laughs> up and down the wing. Uh, yeah, up and down the, the wings. Well, more for warm ups. Oh, yeah, for, yeah, 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 for, for the fans. It's good for fans. No Bucky. Um, no, Pretty no, boy. Does he not wear a Bucky? We got to ask Drysdale about that. No Bucky? Does he go no Bucksy? I don't know. He's, I don't got, know the, he, he's got the good flow. I feel he like he should, have, he should have a Bucksy. But... Uh, no, but sir, it's not funny. He's out six to eight. Yeah. Um, hope he uh, gets well. And then, uh, sad note real quick, former flyer Glenn Cochran uh, lost his battle uh, with cancer. He was a, I knew him since I was a little kid. He actually lived with my dad. Oh, really? Wow, um, I didn't know that. Yeah, he lived with my dad. Uh, I remember being a kid and staying, you know, come to see my dad. And, uh, yeah, what a Cocker. shame. I didn't know he was he was, he was battling yeah, cancer there. It's, it's fun. Uh, quickly, uh, my dad spoke with him on Thanksgiving, and he told he told Sudsy that uh, he thought he had it beat and was going to get out to, uh, January 1, to be honest, hmm. uh, after he finished everything up. And then, uh, obviously, things took a turn there, so it's sad. But uh, um, What a shame. Just wishing his family all the best. Yeah. He, he was a really good man. So yeah, we'll, prayers. We'll miss you, buddy. Prayers. Well, I think we're ready to ask. I think we are. We've got quite the individual joining us today. Yeah. What a week he's had for a birthday week. Yeah, yeah. 47 years old. Terry Ryan making a pro comeback in PR. his hometown of St. John's, Newfoundland. And what a decorated character to say the least you gotta be loyal to the soil (laughs) yes you do (laughs) yes you do i think we're ready to rock here let's go 143 before we get to our interview with terry ryan a quick message from our friends at gametime.co you shouldn't have to worry when you buy your tickets for your next big event game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all sports music comedy and theater events near you with killer last minute deals all in prices views from your seat and their best price guarantee game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets i know i've struggled with buying tickets in the past getting screwed over last second not anymore with gametime.co see the view from your seats before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive all in prices show your total upfront, so you know you're getting a great deal before you check out. Buy tickets in seconds with two taps. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event, and even an hour after it starts. It's the place to find last minute seats. Find exclusive flash deals and sponsored deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. With zone deals, you can pick the selection and Game Time picks the seats for big time savings. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time, Download the GameTime app, 
create an account and use code nasty for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code nasty, N-A-S-T-Y for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. GameTime.co. Welcome back. I'm Riley Cote. And I'm Derek Settlemeyer. And this week, Riggs, we couldn't be happier, luckier, or any other word you want to use to welcome our guest. This young man is a first round pick overall. He was eighth overall by the Montreal Canadiens. This guy is a host of his own podcast, Tales of TR. He's a big ball hockey star. He's repped uh, your country, Canada, many times. He's a TV star. Yes, he is. And he's an absolute legend. And I think he had one of his birth- best birthdays ever this week. Please welcome to the show, Mr. Terry Ryan. TR, what's up, brother? Not much, but well, it's been a long week, but a good one. <laughs> lot, lots of messages and requests and everything. But the way I see, uh, the way I see it, guys, there's so many negative stories in the news. I don't mean to be negative, but there, there are a lot out there, but that's the nature of the news mm-hmm. cycle. So I figured, you know, I'm part of a positive story. I'd like to do, you know, as many of, I'd an, like to answer as many requests as possible. So the answer, how am I doing? A little tired, but real happy. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Still man. recovering, I bet. Oh God. What a, yeah. what a week, man. What a week. What a whirlwind. Yeah. Appreciate yeah. you guys taking notice. Yeah. Oh man. God. Uh, always, always been a fan of, uh, obviously I had Brian Boucher and, and I heard stories way back in the day when I had Boucher, you know, and, uh, we, we were in, going into Freddie beach there and, uh, he's like, Oh, nasty. You'd love this guy. He's nuts, man. Like, what? <laughs> you know, uh, so many, so many stories, but, uh, just probably want to start off with, uh, tell us how this came about and, and, and what happened. Yeah. Well, the, the gist of it here is that the growlers had a bunch of injuries and a flu bug. Okay. And as hockey fans would know, Newfoundland, St. John's is a great place to play in the minors, but the downside is that you're on an Island. And if you want to call someone up or over or whatever you want, you know, <laughs> it, it's not always easy, especially if the next day there's an after- afternoon game. So they, the, they played out around next thunder on Thursday and Friday. And this game, or sorry, Thursday and Saturday, and this game was on Sunday in the afternoon. Now, I'd been down to the game on Saturday, and I was well into it. I mean, my buddies took me out. They're like, we might as, technically my birthday's Sunday, but let's go out Saturday. It's going to be a night. It's going to be hopping. So I started drinking here before the game, watching videos. I always watch some old music and hockey videos before I go out, put me in a good mood. Went down to the game with buddies. Then we went from there to Green Sleeves, the uh, the hockey bar, really, the main hockey bar here for, uh, I mean, it's an everything bar, live music and everything, but it's where the hockey guys hang out for the last 30 years. So nothing's changed. We went there. Then we went to Blue on Water, another place close by. So that's when I got the call. Twelve. It was five <laughs> minutes after 12 on my birthday, and Zach O'Brien phoned and said, do you want to play tomorrow? And uh, I, I really, he's a good buddy of mine. He's one of the best players in the East coast league, in my opinion, or in the ECHL, as I should say. And, uh, anyway, then I, I really hung up after a little bit of back and forth. I thought he was kidding. And then Adam party phoned me. A lot of hockey fans might be familiar with NHL or long time NHL. He's assistant coach here now. And he said, no T-bone, seriously, we need you. And the big thing here, guys, not the big thing, but like, cause a lot of people saw it as a publicity stunt at first. It really wasn't. I skate with these guys all the time. Five of them are real good friends that are here in the summer. Um, four, we got five or six of them, actually five Newfoundlanders on the team, which seems rare for pro hockey to have that many locals, but a lot of guys from here want to play here. We always seem to, and you know, there, there are players, Zach started the year overseas. He's got a Calder cup. A lot of players, you know, Pards played here. His last year, you know, he skipped over. You know, he's retired. He can't. So a lot of Newfoundlanders want to play here, might extend their career or might play here when they could have an opportunity somewhere else because they enjoy it. So we always have locals. And those locals I've gone to battle with in ball hockey championships, you know, real, that's real battle, uh, you know, world or, or national championships. I'm saying, even though it's not as big as hockey, I'm just, if, if you're in a national final or a world final, you know, you, you learn to be a teammate. You, you, you bond to be a, a you bond easier than you would with someone who's uh, in the next cubicle, say. So right. um, there's that. And there's also January 10th is the senior hockey deadline. So we have a good senior league. And if, for those that don't, 
that sounds like a bunch of old men playing. It's not senior amateur AAA hockey here is just, you know, basically, I don't want to say basically semi-pro, but it's a real good level. Um, it, it, it's only a 24 game schedule. Guys can handle it. And in Newfoundland, we, we lost in the Allen cup final last year. Clamville caribou is my old team. The Allen cup is the national championship. So, we got six teams here full of players that are all back from pro and major junior uh, college in the States and, and, or, and in Canada, like really a lot of junior a guys, it's real good hockey for senior hockey. There's a draft. If you finish last, you pick first, like people. And, and, you know, we really take pride in that. Um, the, the, the history of herder hockey, you look back the herder trophy. It's interesting for those that want to look into it. And then we go on to the Allen cup and that's our goal. So guys didn't want to play. Because if you play after January 10th, you forfeit your senior um, uh, eligibility. And oh, people really? laugh wow. when I say that, but wow. we really take pride. I played senior hockey until two years ago, right? And and every and if I couldn't commit, I wouldn't play. You look on elite prospects, I think they, you know, all every year, all the games, I wouldn't, you know, it's not a one-off here. If you, if you don't show up to the game in senior here, you know, an hour and a half, two hours before, like, you know, you got to answer to somebody. Like, it's not just like pick up. You know, fans, there's paid fans, a lot of them. Um, there's imports. So that's a real thing. So that's if had I been playing senior hockey or if this had been January 9th, none of n- none of the events would have taken place. Wow. So now you, wow. people now start to see. Right. OK. And I skate with them all the time. So Zach is like literally Matt. I'm telling you, Terry's the only real viable option right now. And, you know, Newfoundland's big. People go, well. You might think of someone on the West Coast. It's, you know, six, eight hours away. So it was St. John's and area, guys who aren't playing at all. Now, the last thing I'll say, there might be someone that played pro four years ago. But what do you want? A 30-year-old who hasn't skated in four years because yeah. they exist out there. Right. So really, the, the options were limited. That's why it happened. Wow. It's crazy. What a, sto- what a story. Yeah, I, I mean, know. you got the <laughs> – I mean, obviously, you got some, some legs underneath you. You've been skating with them. Um, and – you, you got the heart. I mean, you're, you, you know, you're, you're a newfie and that's your, your backyard and like how fitting and, and, and you get a Tilly. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like for, it was a first star. I mean, star. your birthday, it's like, what a, yeah. what a series of events there for sure. They, um, yeah, there's a lot to unpack. I, I know I'm in <laughs> shape and, and the boys knew that, but it's one thing to be in shape. It's another thing to like, be behind the play or you know try to keep up with the play right so i didn't really know now like i said the skate i'm in in the summers um all the pro guys come back like dawson mercer and new hook and i'm by far the oldest player in it but i've just kept going every i i I, for for no other reason than i play ball hockey still on a national level i'll show you something we got this just yesterday that's the ring i won oh Oh, yeah wow that that was a few months ago hold on beauty that that was a few months ago. We won the Masters World Championships in Buffalo in a shootout against the U.S. So, like I said, like I'm, I, I'm, I'm staying in shape. Yeah. Right. So, so, and if if I don't skate with those guys in the summer, if I was to slack or, or join a slower skate, then I know I won't have the legs. It's like, you know, you get older. You know what I mean. Once you take a foot off the gas. You know, you start to be more sore. You're, you're, you you're can feel your aches and pains, and you just get slower. So I've just stayed at that. Now, I'm not saying I didn't get slower. I'm just saying for a 47-year-old, I don't think I could have been any more prepared from a point of of skating and, and cardio, okay? But the other thing is there's no, like, hitting in the summer or anything. So then I thought about that, too. I'm like, I'm going to play yeah. a – now, is there as much hitting? No. But I was putting myself out there going, okay – what's going to happen here because you know i'm going to be exhausted if i start to grind work in the corners like right so anyway all that was going through my mind but when i got to the rink the boys were good because uh they could tell i mean i I was trying not to be nervous but guys come on man wherever you've been whatever you've done there's no way this was like uh, you know i felt the kind of same as i did before my first nhl game all those questions are coming back we're not talking a few years guys we're not talking eight years we're not talking a (laughs) we're talking over two decades Right. So, yeah, <laughs> again, I go to all games I watch. I've often wondered, God, this looks way faster than when I played. I wonder if I could get around out there. So no, those questions happened. 
uh, you know, and again, I love the Growlers. I take pride in being a Newfoundlander, and we've not only a pro team here that are affiliated with the Leafs, it really gives us a sense of relevance. People love it. Uh, Mary Brown Center is situation, situated right next to George Street. It's a nice little, um, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's a hockey town, but it's a nice little package for any fan. If, even if you're not a hockey fan and you were to go to a game and go downtown, you, you'd enjoy the experience, right? I mean, it's part of what we got to offer here in St. John's, and we take real pride in it. So I, I'm a fan for that reason. You know, I, I would have... If they had ever asked me, um, if, if, if they had asked me and I was 25 years old in another hypothetical world, uh, I'd be just as proud. Like, I would have loved to do it. So the, right. the age thing is just, I guess, icing on the cake. Yeah, right. I'll, I'll tell you what, you made me start thinking, uh, talking about how you keep yourself in shape. Riley and I had uh, a Nasty Knuckles ball hockey tournament uh, with the National Ball Hockey League two summers ago. Yeah. And we, we both, stay in pretty good shape we try to and uh it was a one day event and i could not move oh, man. we played we made it well the last game we played with five guys we had one sub because people oh, had to leave and i, I never been I, so gassed he, in my he, life i mean and i feel like i'm in pretty good shape and he's definitely in really good shape but i i could just imagine the but that, running and yeah man, all the running and everything it's, it's a different animal but uh Can't glide. Right. Yeah, you, no, yeah, you right. cannot. You can't. You can't hide at yeah, all. Hide you, no. <laughs> uh, no. But I, I did want to say one more thing about the the game. Like, obviously, we followed everything, and um, there were there were two things. I loved your speech before the game to the boys, just quickly yeah. saying, "Hey, this isn't a sideshow. Let's fucking get yeah. ready to play." I love that. Yeah. And the other thing is, why'd you have to make me cry post game in your in your interview, man? Like, come man, on, I did. Yeah. I saw they're like, you got to be. Up. I didn't. I, I again, I, I it's it might sound cocky when I'm saying this, and I don't want it to put, but I I didn't see it like everybody else did because I'm I, again I go to I play with these guys like Zach is 16 years younger than me, but since he's 16 years old, we've been going to the national ball hockey channel outside of the last few. Now and he's pro has come and really it was hard at first, but since maybe the last three years, no, but but I'm still playing with his buddies and everything. What I'm saying is that. In my head, yeah, and I hang with guys again just because my I get a bit older, you know. I'm single, so I, you know, teammates are one thing, but I could kind of gravitate towards the single guys who are usually younger, even in senior hockey a few years ago, right? Yeah. I'm not saying I'm trying to be like, but I'm just saying a lot of them are my peers, like we hang out and stuff, like not so much the 20 year olds, but 28, 32, 30, and the yeah. boys are right there Jordan Escott, James Melindy, the guy who I jumped up and kind of stuck up for, not that he needs that. But it was the time of the game. But like, you know, so again, I I, did, I don't think I saw I knew it, I knew it was was nice story and, and, and it would be get a bit of attention. But I didn't think the national news and everything. But then when, as I thought about it, I'm like, I am 47. Like yeah. I started to think about it. But so, I, you know, when I came off at the like when I fought, I swear, guys, I wasn't trying to put on a show. Had I fought early in the game, you know, I, I know. All my buddies text me after, and they're like, well, the over-under was, you know, we knew that. And I'm going, <laughs> look, if I did and I lose the fight, now now the team's in a bad spot. And they did hire me to do a job, and I got to treat this like I'm 25. I can't, because, you know, all the other, how can I tell the boys we're going to drown out the noise if I go out and make it noisier? Yeah, so, right. <laughs> right. So sure. I, that's what I was thinking. I was, again, just trying to be good there for the team. And I'm like, it, it really... My focus was on trying to make sure I kept up with the play. Right. And, uh, and again, Matt didn't have to start me. He didn't have to play me after that. In the third period, he gave me a regular shift. And I look up, and, and James Melindy got corked. And I'd done my homework a little bit in case, because now I figured, who knows, guys, like I went up to Ty Domi when I was 18. I mean, someone might do that. Didn't turn out that they did. And it turns out after the game, a bunch of them were Shorzy fans. We all hung out. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, it didn't feel like that out there. And, uh, you know, they did have a couple guys. So, and I knew Zach Walker was one of them. And when I saw that he did that and James's helmet popped off, but, you know, I could say, well, the time was right. But I, I didn't even really, it was, uh, you know, by that point, now I'm going regular shift. It was just like it was 1997. Like we, yeah. It was a game. My, my captain got hit. And I, my buddy, you know, I grew, I grew up with him. I'm way older. But I've known James for a decade at least. I followed his his rise into pro hockey. And then we, like I said, we skate and we hang out sometimes in the summers. Right. So there was an instinct in me as a teammate 
And I didn't really, I was like, what, what am I here for? Right. What am I here for? So I tracked him down and didn't jump him at kind of poked him. And he turned around just like you would. Yeah. And I said, let's go. And he did. He didn't have to do that. Matt Cook didn't have to put me on the ice. And I went over to Zach's dressing room after old school because this happened more than once back in the day. Real bit of respect after the game. But I just knocked on the door and he came out. I think he was really surprised to see me. But I said, look, you didn't have to do that. You helped me create that moment. I'm glad you got a couple in. You know, if one of if, if I fucking pounded him or he pounded me, I don't think it would have had the same weight to it. it should, you know, because there's people that follow this story that aren't hockey fans. Right. And I think it showed this is what happens. And then it's that's that's hockey. Now, I told my daughter, Penny Lane, I hope you understand that this isn't you're in your sport. Hockey has a history of fighting and there's a respect to it. And you look, the refs let you go. The players know what's happening. The fans here. It's different. It's just a different sport. You can't be doing that. I mean, she knows that. But I said, you know, that's why I fought, right? Because sometimes there's a time and a place in hockey. And that's also why I shook his hand after, because yeah. there's a time and a place and there's right. respect, right? So I said, that's what I love about it. Some people are going to tell you fighting is, is, should be outlawed. And who knows? Who am I to say? If, if, if more people get on that than not, I'm just hanging on to the past. But as of right now, there's still hundreds a year. Right. In the, yep. in the NHL, there's still lots. There's a time and a place. And um, so I, I'm, I'm happy that that like it went down the way it did. Right. Because even though I mean, I got he pumped me pretty good at the end. He got me behind the head. But it, still, I, I think it was symbolic of something else. And, and you know, mm -hmm. I don't I don't know. It was with the Leafs prospects and some people question it. the guys. I just think the game's changed. You know, I, I don't think yeah. it's necessarily Leafs or anybody else. These guys were all gamers. We were telling stories in there. There's different ways to be gamers now. You know, yeah. I think what I did was probably a little bit old school, but it's still out there. Yeah. And oh, yeah. Like I yeah. said, it, it's uh, the other thing. Sorry, I'm talking a lot, but I can't move on before I say this. So my daughter's there and everything. That's one thing. Imagine she, she, reti uh, she was born seven years after I retired, and now this is 13 years after she's born, like right. just time and space is just wild. So, but there's that. But the other thing is that you do gain a lot of experience with age. And, and I don't mean like X's and O's and coaching is great as opposed to playing because I've coached a little bit. But I mean, when I came out for warm up, it, I thought the biggest things going through my mind would be okay. And, and fuck with, uh, new gloves and, and a stick they just gave <laughs> yeah. me. i use true sticks and he's like no you gotta use these warriors and i was going i've never used a warrior in my life and the cook was a little bit different i got on the ice man and every time i'd stick handle like it it twig off the it'd flick off the top of the stick like i didn't have oh, no. my hands and i'm going holy shit so i thought that <laughs> for the game i'm going this is going to be the i'm guessing the height because like i got sticks there but it doesn't feel the same it was a different lie Right. Hockey players, I'm telling you, I don't even think about the lie because I just had the same stick for so long. But I'm like, whoa, this is a five and a half, not a six, right? And I'm going, well, I can't use this. Well, you got to. <laughs> you got no choice. You know, choice. You know I'm going, right? Like, so all these odds are stacked against me because if I just, if the flick, if, you know, if I bobble the puck, it's going to be because I'm 47. No one wants to hear it because it's a new stick. So, right. so, but anyway, so I thought all that, but as soon as I went out, warm up and i could hear people and i could look up it was like people from all walks of life that i've come across in my life but they didn't know each other personally so like i'm on film set all the time i don't bring up much about hockey if they ask me i will but for years you know i just like i said i'm crew i'm in the outside i'm a production assistant there would have to be a rare opportunity or person to say you know what was it like when your first nhl game when there were people on film set no there's like it's tense and you know Shit gotta, it's much if there's a parallel to hockey is that you gotta have teamwork if one cog in that wheel fails then the whole thing goes you know it's fucked so i just and then there's you know people i went to university from 09 to 2012 i had money in my contract with montreal still to a little bit left over to put myself through and i got an arts degree in there i mean you think i'm going to be talking about the montreal canadians in class i was just like you know <laughs> like this man just i got a folklore degree the people in there most of them didn't even ever see a puck yeah, right? yeah. Well, I'm in there, english english minor i'm taking I'm, I'm, I'm i got a minor i got like four courses in like a shakespeare irish poetry the last thing we're talking about 
is hockey, which was good. I needed it then. I learned because of those, that experience, I wrote tales of a first round nothing. Other right. people wanted to be a ghostwriter and focus on the, you know, the turmoil I had with Montreal, which was really only with Tarion. I love my time in Montreal. You know, I, I could have done things differently, but I didn't want that story out there. I'm like, you guys want to write this thing. Like, I, you know, well, we're going to write it in your favor. I go, don't give a shit, though. I don't want to spin it the other way either. I got nothing mm. against the Montreal Canadiens. Right. I had a problem with one person. I should have handled it better. So then anyway, ECW called, and I said, look, Mike, uh, Michael Holmes, I said, I can write this myself now. I just got to, when I say folklore, I focused on the storytelling part, right? right. And, and that's a big part of Newfoundland tradition. We, You know, no electricity. We're the oldest, wet, I don't want to say there was people here, but as far as Europeans coming over in the 1600s, we were first. And, uh, you know, the first settled communities all, all year round and everything. And, you know, with no electricity and they're all small little communities. So you learn to tell stories and sing songs. Uh, my relatives would all tell you that they're not performers yet. Every weekend, you know, the spoons come out. They'll be, <laughs> they'll be telling <laughs> stories. Right? Yeah, right. Yeah, that's that's yeah, that's Newfoundland, right? Hey, don't don't let him bring. Right See, you're you're just keying him up for this little yeah, drum. Right? Bring our little drum. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I mean. It's you know, you visited all kinds of cultures now, especially Riley. Yeah, and you know, it's that at that point, there's no phones, no like, so people all over the world would have their own. That I think you know, again, having the folklore interest, you know, a lot of. A lot of cultures would have, you know, it's the same thing that they're doing. They're just doing it from another angle. And, you know, it's just togetherness in a community. And the community needs that. It's part of human evolution. Right. So right. In, in, um, in, in Newfoundland, we, we've got that, uh, you know, a, a lot of people share that trait. And they would probably say that they're not talented, but they're into that, right? So anyway, that was where my interest laid in school. And I, at the time, I needed a bit of a break from, Hockey, I was never too far. I was playing senior hockey, but I wasn't doing a podcast. I wasn't answering questions on it. I put my daughter in soccer. I don't yep. know. Maybe I just said, I don't know if she needs that pressure to be Terry Ryan's daughter. Uh, and anyway, and on and on. But so all these, you know, point, there was people I went to kindergarten with, people I played soccer with and baseball with. I mean, I always play. I'm not great, but I played amateur both right up until my 30s. Um, so I... All of a sudden, I, I hate to use this analogy because I don't think I'm like this big fish, but the movie Big Fish at the very end, this guy the whole time is telling all these stories. And you're like, yeah, come on, right? And his son's going, yeah, I, I'm sure that really happened. But then at the end, all these people come together that, that he was telling stories about and they've never really met, but now they're there. That's what it was like. It was looking up right. going, wow. And then I had everybody knew my dad, right, from Chicklets and everything else. Yeah. Here, <laughs> here he's Terry Ryan and I'm Terry Ryan Jr., so, you know, he's well before me, same sort of thing. So now he's up there talking to like directors and, and producers and teammates and soccer like teammates. My, my high school teachers, like teacher, just that, that, that's why now I'm skating around going, wow, like we're all going to experience this together. Like, right. you know, there was there was a hundred people at the game, at least that never saw a hockey game before. They just heard that's I was awesome. playing. That's awesome. Wow. Right? That's really yeah. cool. So it yeah. was it was a lot of emotions. It, I'm telling you this. The last thing I'll say about the game. In the second period, I was up, but there was penalties, special teams. So I didn't go out. And then there, there was I don't I don't know if you could hear it on TV. People have texted it to me, but the whole building started to go, we want Terry, everyone. <laughs> yeah. And I I felt uncomfortable because I'm like, Matt Cook's behind me. <laughs> I'm putting him in a bad position, and I don't want to. The very thing I didn't want to do is taking on its own life form, and people are going crazy. And when he put me over the boards, finally, the place went bonkers before the puck was dropped. And I'm thinking, I'm starting to, like, if, if I had just gotten lost in the moment, I would have started crying. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, like, seven minutes later, I fought Zach Watt. So it was a lot to, like, it was a lot to absorb and have to contain within, you know, it, it was okay. All this is happening. I mean, it was overwhelming. I can't explain any more overwhelming feeling. My first NHL game, great. I don't want to disrespect it. I love the Habs. I still do. I love to be an NHLer, but all those, my friends weren't there to experience. I hadn't lived long enough to have that many friends. Uh, you know, it was, it was in Montreal. It was great as far as that fandom goes, but, you know, my parents weren't there. There was none of that. So it was actually against Philly, the Legion, Legion of yep. Doom. 
Oh, yeah. Right. yeah, it was, man. I was like, it was a lot about the game because I love Eric Lindros as a player, man. Like, he was right there. Like, he was, I mean, well, who wouldn't have played any kind of physical hockey? Right. So, um, you know, that was great for a lot of reasons, and that being the biggest. But, you know, nothing came close to this. This was mind-blowing. And when I came off after, the boys were like, keep going out. I didn't want to do it. I still don't realize that all these cameras are there for that, like, I know it's a story, guys. I knew it would be on the front page of the Evening Telegram here. But, you know, I, I'm coming off, and they're sending me out. And now looking at the videos, I'm like, it's a good thing that I, I listened to them. I didn't want to do it. And I didn't hear that. What it was was hardest working player of the game. That's what I got. And I awesome. think it, I think maybe third star. It wasn't They were doing me a favor there. But, um, you know, I did, I guess, try hard. And, and I dropped my gloves. So, but I'm glad because that's what I told my daughter before the game. I said, all I can do is try my hardest. Yeah. You know, I could sit here and try to dissect this. I could, you know, I, I could, what if I go out and, and, and suck? What if I lose a fight? What if I have a breakaway and I miss? Like, I can do that all day. Yeah. But I can tell you this. What if I go out and work my hardest? I tell you, if I do that, I'll get respect. And that's really, right. that's what's going to happen. So uh, yeah. that was long-winded, but that was the gist of my experience. It's yeah. an amazing, amazing story. It, it was, yeah, I just, just amazing. I mean, everyone, I, I work with a junior team, TR, and in, uh, in the North American Hockey League, Philadelphia Rebels. <clears throat> I'm, I helped them out, and uh, everyone was just, uh, do you know him? Do you know him? I was like, I don't I don't really know him. I've met him. I actually had shots yeah. with you uh, in Freddie Beach. Uh, yeah. After one of the games, we, we were all out, and you were there. and uh, That was it, at Sweetwater's. I remember it, Booch coming over to my place, asked Booch about that night. Yeah, we had a yeah. good time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, watch out. Booch gets paranoid. We started talking about yeah. the old days. No, but, uh, you know, all the kids were asking me. It, it, it's really cool. But uh, I the reason I – it was just it was a touching story, obviously, for everything you just said. But I, watching the post game and you started, you know, talking about Billy Lane there, I just was like – Dude, why you gotta make me cry, yeah, man? Like, geez. But I mean, I I have kids of my own, so I I get it. I get it. It was awesome. Well, ima though. Imagine feeling like that. If that made you, I'm glad that it hit home. And I, yeah. I didn't see that either, guys. Like, I'm coming out at the end. And it's like they're like, go. I'm getting ready to get in the shower. They're like, media yeah. availability. It says right on the wall. I'm like, what? Are you guys kidding? <laughs> I went out. I'm like, you know, I didn't really think that was gonna happen. So I'm glad it, it struck home with people. But again, yeah. that's what I mean. You, you, if you were affected looking at it. Yeah. Picture having that feeling times a hundred and yeah. going onto the ice and the whole place going. And I'm thinking about my daughter, but now I'm going and, you know, and I'm going, geez, if the puck drops and I suck, oh my <laughs> God, this is going to embarrass everybody in here, man. And, oh, you know, man. So anyway, it worked out. It's classic. I, I I just I just love how you get called up after midnight, the day before the game. Day before the game. You know how fitting. You know Having it just seems like it needs to be that way. You know, too much prep would have been like. <laughs> yes, yeah, it just true. wouldn't have point. wouldn't have been the same yeah. storyline. I, I guess. Yeah. So no, cool. it wouldn't have. Too much prep wouldn't have. <laughs> and it's funny because I got like back in the day. I don't know if people want to hear it, but. And I don't know if it's good or bad, but everybody was doing it, so it's all relative. But if we pulled in somewhere, my, at minors or NHL, like you'd almost have to answer for if we had a steak dinner, which we or whatever dinner. Usually, you know, you get off the bus, you put your stuff in there, and you meet the boys at least for the meal, and then you can go back if you want. Some guys stay. Sometimes you have six or seven pints. You play the next day, and um, you know that would happen. I'm not saying that if you're out clubbing it till four in the morning, that's a little bit different. But there was mm -hmm. often meals, I don't know, morts, wherever you're going to go. And, you know, you have some red wine, maybe a couple of beers. And that was kind of, so I can safely say that I did that. But I, had I known about it, it would have been ridiculous. So finding out at that point and getting to do it because it was forced, you know, is like, yeah, I still got to do what we used to do. Yeah, but right. Yeah, <laughs> right. Two o'clock that day, it would have been disrespectful because that's not the game way the game is played anymore. <laughs> but clearly, it can happen because it I, did happen. And, you know, back then it happened a lot more. And right. I, I tell you, you just reminded me of something, TR. Uh, we were in, we were playing uh, the Maple Leafs in St. John and uh, Frankie uh, by Lois, who we were talking about a little bit before we got started here, the animal. I'll never forget, boys are out and. Billy Barber was pretty good. He, he was old school, like for the fly. You hear all those stories. So Billy was pretty good about letting the boys go. And John Stevens was our captain and <clears throat> at the time. And and I'll never forget, like, he's like, just don't be really stupid. It's like, <laughs> go have fun as a team yeah. and everything. Well, everyone starts heading back. And Frankie 
he's pissed off about say I'm staying out. So he's at a local gentleman's club there in, in, yeah. in uh, Newfoundland. And I get back to the hotel. Billy calls my room and says, you go get that fucking guy. I tell him to call. I said, you want me to go get Frankie out of, oh, yeah. Fuck, oh, yeah. out of the right. rippers? He says, go. De-, he called me Delio. He's like, Delio, go get him. So I go, I go to the place and I walk in and I see Francois and I'm like, hey, like, come on, let's go back. Like Billy's, you know, he's kind of losing it a little bit. He goes, sit the fuck down. We're not going anywhere. <laughs> so I end up staying. staying I'm sure I knew it was going that way. Totally yep. Billy says, next morning, did you get him? Deal? We're at breakfast. Yeah. I oh, yeah, him. yeah. Got, got him. <laughs> jumped got jumped him. in the cab, got right back. Oh, Gulliver's, yes. Gulliver's cat or whatever. It's Gulliver's um, cabs. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, but, uh, yeah, I was just going to also say uh, uh. in uh, – 98, 99, we had this uh, Russian kid, Mikhail Chernoff. And, I remember uh, him. I fought yes, him. And, I yeah, fought him and Freddie. Yeah, you fought him. Yeah. And um, he handled himself pretty good. Like like this, yeah. he was just learning the language. And we knew who you were. Um, so when when you guys started fighting, our guys are like, oh, no. Like, this might oh, not go him. well. So, yeah. oh, yeah. This was a story. Jip, we have a group text still because we just had our 25th anniversary from yeah. the cup winning team. And I so we have that. this whole uh, – this whole group text and it's, it's great. Stay in touch with everyone. And Jimmy Montgomery, the coach of the Bruins actually brought it up. He's like, Oh my God. Cause someone put a clip of you and what yeah. has just happened this week. And he goes, remember Mikey Chertoff fought him and we were all like, Oh no, don't. But he, he did. Okay. He didn't get he did. killed. He That's did the good. main he thing. Black in my eye, man. He got yeah. a good one. When he started, he cross checked me in front of the net and I was pissed off. And I assumed, I just assumed someone's going to do that. Knows what's coming. You're and, right. Uh, no, <laughs> I've got that somewhere, guys. I got these all these VHS tapes. I had to breathe the other day, and my dad was like, "You got to put them out there now, like because yeah. it's, it's part of the story." And it, like what you're saying now, I used to think, you know, what do I need to put all these out there? But now I, that I see, you know, it's it's just links to the past and it's stories, and People so I know it, I have man. that somewhere. The same game. Yeah. What's funny is that the same game I fought Francis Belanger twice. And he is. And so I got called up. If you see when in the NHL the next night, I fought Matthew Barnaby and Bob Bugner. So when I'm when I'm interviewed on Hockey Night in Canada, it's, it's on YouTube. So you can see welts under my eyes. Oh, my and God. And I can't remember if that was as much from that game as it was the night before against Philly. And so you had five night. fights in two games. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> in, four, in 48, 48 I hours. You. Oh, I believe I it. You. Yeah. Well, the, so the funny thing was, you know, for us, we're like, damn, Mikey. We called him Mikey. His name is Mikel. But like, Mikey, wh- what were you thinking there? And he's like, oh, just I just fight. He, we're like, but you you haven't fought all year. He goes, uh, brother's pro boxer, so I train all the time. We're like, holy shit, man. <laughs> maybe you should fight a little more. Yeah, yeah right. called up quicker, right? Like back then, you know, it, it, well, it obviously 100%. helped. So I'll you tell know? you something here too about Frankie. So Frankie played here in St. John's, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. So. I'd seen him play, um, like the, in their inaugural year, ninety one, ninety two. That was I was fourteen, and I left. I would come home. I was so homesick. Whenever, so ninety one to ninety three, I watched Frankie play a lot, and I was living in like BC playing junior. But every chance I would come back, and like, we couldn't believe we had the Toronto Maple Leafs farm team. So you're talking at ninety eight, ninety nine. So one, it was towards the beginning of the year, okay, and. I I just been sent down and I joined the boys and I know okay I'm not going to name any names but some guys because it's not a big deal but maybe they don't want to be named but there was some guys on your team and my team I mean we played each other hard but there was a respect right so we all went out to the strip club the night before right so I'm sitting there one of the boys on your team the phantoms sent over a girl She's stripping for me. She's, um, you know, t- doing all of the above. Just use your imagination. And I'm yep. sitting down. And she, uh, I, and she goes, what do you do? And I said, well, I'm a hockey player. And she goes, yeah, well, my boyfriend's a hockey player, too. And I said, yeah. I said, I'm a pro hockey player. I'm a pro hockey player. And she goes, yeah, so is he. So I start to go, well, who's that now? <laughs> Frank the animal by a Lois. I said, <laughs> Get the fuck off my lap right now. <laughs> Check, please. Check, please. Yeah, right. <laughs> it was nearly time to go anyway. Now listen to this. I go to the rink the next day going, what the fuck have I done? <laughs> there, we go to warm up. Frankie 
doesn't cut his stick. He doesn't put tape on either side. Let's and he try. just leans on it and he stares at our warm up. <laughs> now I'm convinced <laughs> that he's there. It's it's people are going. What the fuck is that out on the red line? And we're doing like the horseshoe, and guys are going, "Oh my god, oh my god!" <laughs> and I'm going, "I'm thinking he, he's going to get me. That's what's going on. He's going to get me." And we got Sylvain Blouin, and Sylvain yeah. Blouin is like, like you know, it's probably more his job. Yeah. I know I fight, but you know, it's probably his role to do that. <laughs> I'm over to the. I can't remember. I, and I, he wasn't pulling the shoot. He he did have like Sly fought a lot, so he had a, like his hand was mush. And we're on the bench, and I, I kind of could see that. And I said, well, he's he's here to get me for sure anyway, man. He's here to get me. So I, I think i got to take care of this myself. So I went out there. This is on YouTube somewhere. I go right at him. I, people, I, <laughs> do you have a death wish? I'm like, no, but I don't want to wait till the end of the game. Like, I'm on the power right. play. I just got, yeah, I don't want to play the whole game, like hearing footsteps. You know, I, I just don't. And I, I, it's more, I don't care about taking a punch in the face. It's more about knowing the anticipation that it might come. And the way he was looking at me, the way and the way in my head I had it broken down. I'm like, I got to get this over with. So I went right at him, and I fucking threw my body into him, and I fought him right in front of your bench, and he's hitting me. But like, I kind of could. I had the boards, and I stood on my feet, and I got like a couple in, and then I went like this, and now he's hammering me. He's hitting me harder than I'm hitting him. But it's like an okay fight. It's like maybe 65, 35, and I'm going, fuck, man, that's over with. I go over in the box. And I go to talk to him to apologize for last night. <laughs> and I tell him, and he goes, he just goes, yeah, well, you know what? All good. He goes, oh, that's made up. It's a friend of mine. No big deal at all. And I go, no way. He goes, <laughs> oh, <laughs> fight me. And he goes, I don't get many guys that want, want to be takers at home, let, let alone guys that run me. And I go, <laughs> okay, perfect. I go, I watched you in St. John's, like, you know, in 91, to 93, whatever. It is. And he goes, yeah, I know. And he goes, tell the boys. And he knew some of my friends, Greg Bird Dog Smith, who's now passed away. But mm. what a fucking guy. And, yeah. Todd Gullian, yeah. and he's like, yeah. say hi to the boys. And then, um, you know, just a couple of years ago, I was with Stu Malgunas, another ex-NHL player. Oh, I know. I had Stewie, too. Yeah. Yeah, I remember Stewie. And yeah. Stewie oh, said, yeah. you know, Frankie tells that story. And, and, you know, he's proud of you and everything. I'm going, no way. And this is right at the beginning of the pandemic. So it's not that long ago. And he came over and got Frankie on the phone. And it was as if we were high school buddies. It was great. Ah, awesome. Wow. Yeah, Frankie's yeah. the biggest yeah. teddy bear you'll ever fucking it. meet, man. What a guy. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> That's he, incredible. he did some damage there for, well, he did at St. John's too. But oh, when he yeah. got to Philly, he was, he, when, when in America, you have an NHL franchise, obviously, and you got, the, like you said, Legion of Doom. Frankie had a damn billboard in Philadelphia. He was on yeah. a billboard. I mean, there, there. We, we played a game one night, Tr, and um, Frankie was out. I think he was suspended. <laughs> Imagine that. And uh, <laughs> they had a. He was going to sign in between the second and third. So we come out for the third period. The, the, almost the whole building's almost empty, and and we averaged like twelve grand a game in in Philly and Spectrum. Yeah. And uh, there was a line that went all the way around the Spectrum just for him to sign one of the the, <laughs> yeah. the books. It was it was hilarious. But he was uh, a folk hero. He, he he was, was. he yeah. still, still is here still people ask and he's been on the show a couple of times and we still get people say get that animal back on there again because he just says he don't give a fuck <laughs> he just says whatever he wants but it, it's it's funny you brought up uh bird dog there uh um greg smith because he's i had him um well my dad was a trainer with the flyers so i knew bird dog from when i was a kid yeah and uh craig baruby and him are really good friends as well and, and uh so i knew he was an assistant coach there with you uh in uh st john but uh okay you got a great guy, man. He was a he was a funny, funny guy, man. He's one of those guys, kind of like Prongs, act like he's in a bad mood, you know, but yeah. he really wasn't. Yeah. I really liked Bird Dog. He was Bird, awesome. Bird is from Mississauga, came to Newfoundland, finished his career, and uh eloped with a girl from here and, and just loved it. He was the kind of guy that just wanted to be in his rubber boots, uh, go go down to the beach, maybe start a campfire. Um, you know, really laid back. He'd rather have beers in a shed than downtown. And when we did go downtown, it was always to like uh, Green Sleeves or Alan Lager with his buddies. Like he was never out, you know, clubs. He was like loyal to his girl. Just yep. what a what a man. I'll tell you two, two, two bird dog things. First of all, first of all, the reason he respected me, I'm playing my first game with the actual like Canadians exhibition and everything. But it's these rookie stuff. Right. So we were up in northern Ontario, New Liskert and Timmins, and we were playing these like tour of like rookie games and each team could dress like some veterans. So 
we dressed like Jerry Fleming, a big guy. Like oh yeah, I remember big him. Guy, you know, big tough guy, six seven, like two fifty, and uh, still coaching, I think. And Bird, they had Bird, and like so, each they, they had like three St. John's Maple Leafs from the year before, and we had the same, except everybody else was rookies. So I went down the side. I'm not going to say I burned Bird, but I mean Bird's thirty one or whatever, and I'm first round pick, just come in. So like I made a move one way and I went around him enough to get a shot. It was a backhand, so I mean I didn't walk walk him or anything, but I got a shot on net. And then Jerry says to me on the bench, "Don't do that again." <laughs> I'd never heard, and I play against like Wade Belak and these guys the yeah. year before. Fought with, I'm like, the fuck "Are you talking about? Don't do that again." I go, what "The fuck did they draft me for? Am I going to jump it in the corner? Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> so stupid." I was like, and then anyway, I did it again, and Bird took his stick. And oh, no. whacked me. It's lucky it hit me where it did because it broke open, but it didn't hurt me. It was right on the like the the skate. The it hit enough of the bottom part of the skate, and I went what? And anyway, then I went to the bench and I'm like, oh yeah. He goes, he's gonna fucking kill you. <laughs> I'm going what? I made a move on him. He goes, yeah. I said that's the way it works. He goes, it is with him. I went out. <laughs> I took my stick and I put it right in his face. I, I didn't hit him, but I go, bird. Obviously, like we're probably gonna play a lot against each other. And I don't give a fuck what you do. If you fucking hurt me, I'm going to fucking hurt you. Now, the next two years, I'm in Freddie. He's here. He played me harder than anybody, but he didn't dirty me. He didn't fucking oh, dirty me. He dirtied right. lots of guys. He yeah. hit me hard. And, well, in front of the net, of course, take me out. I guess now that would be dirty. But, no, I mean, I'm going into his, you know, he didn't yeah. fucking take a suspension-like play on me. And he gave a couple times he saw me, and he, like, Instead of fucking pounding me, he just hit me into the boards. And then after all that ended, I realized he retired and we became good friends. And he said, yeah, like I really respected you out there. But he did, never had a beer with me. I was in once. During all that time, I knew he respected me. My second year in Freddie, and they're in our division. We must have played them, I don't know, 25 times we played them <laughs> one. And, and in the playoffs both years. So. He's sitting there, and finally, I figured he was cool with it, right? Because I know what he's doing out there, and he's giving me a little room. And I said, hey, do you guys – Sean Thornton's there. Now, the next year, I yeah. ended up playing on St. John's. So, and I knew Thornton, and me and Thornton would fight, like, I don't know, six, seven times, and we were buddies, you know, the way it worked back then. Yeah. So, and DJ Smith, Ryan Pepper, all these are my buddies and everything. So they're there, and Bird was there, and I bought the boys some wings and a round or whatever. And Bird told the girl, and he said it loudly. He goes, tell him – Tell him to take that fucking beer back. And I turned around. He said, take that fucking beer back. I go, bird. He goes like that. And the boys are like, go on. So he's still like, Phil will fucking talk to me. Just respect to me. Now, the end of that second year, you got to hear this. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm on the ice. We're playing them in the playoffs. I come off. Like everybody comes off and it's only like. The rookies are out there, like called up from junior, Mike Schwinard or Eric Schwinard, Mike Ribeiro, Jason Ward. So they're out there skating. And 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 a couple of the, like Dave Morissette, a real, real tough guy. Moose. Yeah, the moose, man, the moose. Yeah. So Moose comes in and he's got like one skate on because he's in the therapist's office with Jacques Perron. And he goes, Bird Dog, he's going crazy. He's going crazy. <laughs> so I go, out, I go out. This is the playoffs, okay? In the American Hockey League. It's the fucking Habs versus the Leafs. And we got Roly Melanson out there working with the goalies. And we got rookies getting skated. Okay. But it was, they were supposed to go out there at 10.15. So they were told, we were told that at 10.15, the Zamboni comes on and they go out at 10.30. So Bird was having none of it. He, so I went, by the time I got out there, he'd already started. He took the pucks that they were going to go on with, dumped them over, and he jumped on our ice and tar- started taking slap shots at guys. And I come up, I mean, how does not get a 13-year suspension for this? Yeah, I mean, yeah he right. Comes on and he starts slapping pucks. So I go down like that, and I look up, and it's like the home on the bench, the home sign. It's going boom, and there's pucks going off it. I'm, like it's a pitching machine or something. I'm going, <laughs> I go and go up, man, one by my ear. I'm going this. I crawled back into the room, crawled in. <laughs> And I go, I'm not going out there. Like, whatever you guys want to do. And anyway, you can hear. And the fucking Tyrion goes out and tells him he got a death wish and everything. But that's what would happen now. Bird was fucking crazy. So, but the best guy off the ice. Okay. Yeah. So, this is it. I got to finish with this. Okay. Just on the topic of Bird Dog, whatever you guys need here. But Bird, a few years ago, four years ago, now passed away. Okay. Yeah. And he got prostate cancer. And. He became a shell of himself, not mentally, but 
Bird, the last I saw him, Bird was, I don't know, man, like 150, 160 pounds. But he would always come out with the boys, and he would come down to the Allen Lager Green Sleeves. It was his favorite spot. So we would go out with him, and Bird's there. Man, he's skinny, and he's got the beer, and he's got the Bud Light, and it's shaking, and he puts it down. And I, I'm not going to bring it up, right? No one's going to bring it up. I'm like, Bird knows what's going on. He would have lived longer in a hospital. He didn't want to do it. So he had a hospital bed in his living room, and we would go over and say hi, and he had the IV coming down, and he would fucking take it off and go downtown for a beer. So he's sitting there. We know he's gone soon, right? Right. Tough situation. Anyway, and he doesn't want to hear anything, if, if anything even close. He goes, carry on, guys. Like, girls would come over. Maybe I'm hitting on or something. Carry on. Carry on. It's all good. It's life here. And we would have the beer, right? Yeah. Anyway, the last I saw him, he was in that bed. And it was maybe a day or two later. And now in in, Newf in Newfoundland, what we often do is have like an Irish wedding or sorry, funeral. So there's a funeral and stuff. I, I don't believe Bird had one. I think he was cremated um, like right away, I think. But, but I mean, he had a funeral. But anyway, it's so it's a celebration often. Right. Um, so. Whatever it was. We were, we were down to Kelly's, another one. He only went to three bars on George Street. Kelly's was one. I have four, Trinity Pub. Kelly's, Kelly's was one of them. All the pubs, right? So for whatever reason, we had a gathering there for him. So I get down there. I remember his ashes being there. We had a big picture bird dog. We still got his stall in the rink, right? Oh, we that's awesome. Like, we, we, we skate every you know, the, It's just a skate that him and his buddies after. And we still got the Smith stall. No one sits there. That's awesome. 28. So. Bird, we get down there, and I'm sitting with a few of the boys, and I go, I'm going to buy the first round. And I go over to buy it, and the bartender says, it's not Bird. <laughs> no shit. What? Wow. Yeah. He knew in dying that we'd love a round on him. And I forget how much money I would be lying, but wait, if it was 100 bucks or a thousand, I don't remember. But what it, 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 I had no idea that was coming. And here we wow. are down there to celebrate his life. And he, before he died, had the foresight to buy a round for the boys. Wow. Incredible. That's what wow. kind of guy he is. Yeah, yeah. that's exactly Jeez. right. That's, that's, that's amazing, man. Yeah. We, him and uh, Craig Berube are good buddies and played together a couple of times. And fuck, Chief, Chief's been on with us a couple of times that he, he told stories. I don't know if you, did you ever hear about <clears throat> Bird Dog going across the bridge? Oh, yeah. With the flyers. <laughs> well, he, the boys said, Hey, pick us up. You're driving us to the game. Yeah. Right. So he's going over. And back then you go across the wall women bridge and you flip the quarter into the basket. There's still someone sitting in the toll booth. Yeah. So one of the guys says, Oh, bird, just, just say flyers into the basket. And fuck, <laughs> yeah. the, the gate will go up. He says, <laughs> yeah. what? You know, bird duck, fuck off. Oh no, no. He just it, you play for the flyers. So he gets here. And he's like flyers, you know, <laughs> ladies inside the thing looking at him and thing does it open he goes flyers says it, loud. <laughs> says it louder right lady opens the door says what he goes play for the fucking flyers open the yeah. gate she goes put the fucking corner in. <laughs> the boys are dying that story's still like they, oh, they still try to get guys with it. it's great but i believe i believe there's another, like, if it wasn't the next time, there was some time that he had the same guys in the car. You'll have to ask Craig this, that he was going in a convertible and he just threw it down in, like, January and made them all fucking get through. <laughs> I believe that. Oh, man, that's <laughs> classic. It was, I don't know if it was the next day, but it happened. He would yeah. tell us that. Yeah, there's, there's legendary. Yeah. Like, the, the last thing I'll say, my favorite play on the ice was he had this, he used to have this VCR tape and he'd call it his resume. And he would give it to everybody. I mean, all of us have a copy somewhere. That's why I got to get to these VHS tapes. People have to see this. So he's playing, he's playing Halifax, uh, the Quebec Citadels, or the, sorry, the Quebec Nordiques farm team, the Halifax Citadels. And he gets a penalty. It's whatever for whatever. Fucking probably chopping someone over the head. And <laughs> the puck gets free when he gets out of the box, and he's got a breakaway. So he goes on the breakaway, and he flips it up this high. And I forget the goalie, but it, like Chevel Day or someone like that. And he goes to catch it, and Bird runs him through the net. And the fucking <laughs> the net comes up and bounces into the boards. The guy goes down, and there's a brawl. Oh, he's <laughs> a breakaway. He gave a fuck. <laughs> <no goals. laughs> 
Oh my god. That's awesome, man. That That's so, so great. Uh, I talked to Brian Boucher this morning. Like, as I said, he told us to say hello to you. Um, yeah. but he he I said I've heard, I've seen you on uh you know with with the boys from Spit Chicklets uh Witter and uh, Biz and them, but uh, he he said he wanted to ask you about the Jerry Lewis telethon back in juniors or something. I don't know if that was a thing or <laughs> if you remember. Yeah. <laughs> I said something you can say. If it's not, it's fine. I do remember Bush. Yeah, I had forgotten this. I had him on my podcast. And uh, it was, we, we were doing the Jerry Lewis telethon, I remember. Like, we were raising money. And, of course, it was monotonous and boring. But I'm not trying to say I didn't want to be there. I just, like, spice it up. So I, I do remember, like, answering the phone as different characters. And <laughs> so that the one thing would lead to the other. Like, and I would be, it would always be, like, Terry the Tyrannosaurus Ryan or Terry the Tyrant or Terry the Turnbuckle. But then like I ran out of T words and it would be like anything. So it would be like Terry uh, jumping, jiving Ryan, Terry. <laughs> and so, so when I answered the phone or when I would sign autographs, right. So I would all, I, I didn't ever want to do the same autograph twice. Um, so I would just, so someone came up among in, in those two years of doing that, someone coined me the flying rabbi. So Terry, <laughs> I, I had signed. Now ask me why those words were in my head. I don't know. Terry, the flying rabbi, Ryan. Okay. So I, I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. Cause like a little girl put it on her shirt and came to a game and I'm like, oh, she must think that I'm like the flying rabbi. I, I don't remember writing that, but I must have. So anyway, I did it and it became so popular there for a second that I had a car. My billets, Tri City was fucking great. My billets bought me a Dodge Lancer. It was a beater, but it was like one thousand or two thousand. In in in, in Tri City, everybody had a booster buddy, and mm -hmm. your booster buddy would would buy you things during the year. I mean, I had suits, a fucking car, man. Like, oh yeah, guys, and guys before me, like, oh god, Oli Kolzig or uh, Bill Lindsay or Stu Burns or any of those guys would tell you crazier stories. It got out of hand, and so. For us, there was like a, a limit, but didn't matter. They make you scrapbooks. I got scrapbooks at home, like so many of them, with everything documented. I still got suits that I, I keep for this reason. I'm telling this story, and I got them down like as artifacts in the basement, <laughs> like it was wild. So, and I was like, whatever, and like you know. So I had the Dodge Lancer. I loved it, but it was a bit of a beater. And what we ended up doing, we were just sitting there one day with nothing to do, and. It was the same day. I don't know if Bush told you, but I put on a crash test dummy mask. I <laughs> and I used to drive. And the boys would have a camera. I mean, it was before he, it was before any of this social media. But I got to say, yeah. we were ahead of the curve there. So the boys would either wait on the corner or like be in the back seat. And I'd drive and slam on the brakes. And I'd have latex gloves on, just regular, like under my stuff. And then so when they look over, and I would bounce my head off the wheel and go, <laughs> look over like this. And people would be like, what the fuck? And then we'd drive. We'd have a like, camera. And I, and so it was one of those days. I was like, let's go all out with this. So there was we were in Craig Stahl's um Craig Stahl's Billets garage, and they had black, pink, and gold, not yellow, gold spray paint. So I was like, fuck it, let's go for it. So we picture like Herbie the Love Bug, okay? Yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. we put we put but the stripes were pink, gold, and black. So we did that. And then we put like number 14 where the 53 would be, the Herbie. I'm, I'm a Herbie yeah. fan. So we put it there. And then on the back, on, on the, like the, the, tr or the, you know, the trunk. Yeah. It, uh, the latch, the trunk, the trunk, like right on the back in huge letters, we put the flying rabbi. And <laughs> I drove that. And, and on the rims, we painted pink. And the gold, the, the tires around the rims, we painted gold. This lasted. I couldn't believe that it lasted oh on the car. Uh, and so anyway, I drove that thing for the rest of the fucking year. And like once in wow. a while, we would break out the dummy mask. And it was so much fun. I, but I, I, awesome. I saw him telling this story somewhere. And I know it started with the telethon, but there's something else within the telethon that I forget. He'll have to tell you. Yeah. It's not X-rated. I just can't remember the other part of that story. Oh, that's awesome, man. Wow. Yeah, I, I remember that's hearing real. about the car as well. And the cra I was telling Riley the about the, the, the crash test dummy uh, hat there. That's awesome. Um, so cool. The, the last thing I'll say about the car, I know I'm talking a lot. One day there was a, anybody there. I had to tell this story. You know who called me this morning? 
Um, he'd had a few beers last night with his buddy in Sherwood Park, a guy named Jason Padolan. Jason Padolan was a great minor leaguer, played a little bit in the NHL, 50, 51 year in the A and 40 odd, two years in a row in the West. And he called me and he was with Mike Dubinsky and Mike Dubinsky was a big pick played for Brandon second rounder. I think just got injured right after I played with him. He got traded over to tri city, got hurt and played again. But the boys got prospects now and they, they you know, that their, their kids are prospects and they're going to tournaments together. They're in like Bantam. So they were well into one last night and phoned and I'd done all these uh, all day long, every day I've been answering messages and I've been, it, you know, like I said, it's a positive story. I'm part of it. So I feel somewhat of a duty to answer the requests, uh, at least most of them, if I can. So phone goes off. Only person I answered for all week. I'm like, okay, it's Pode. So I phone this. Anyway, I pick up the phone. The boys, we get talking. We only had like 10 minutes. I only had about 10 minutes. We spoke. And Dubber was like, do you remember that? Do you remember that gas leak that happened with that stupid fucking car? And I go, you know what? I do. So this is part <laughs> of it. I can't remember if I put it in, in my first book. I should have if I didn't. But when we... It's a gas leak, so you know the fire alarm goes off. We all get we all get our skates on. Now the Zamboni door opens, and like we got to go out into the parking lot. Now the Tri City is in the desert, but the odd day it's cold. There's not much precipitation, but there was enough that there was we we could almost skate out there without ruining our skates. Yeah. Right. So and there was grass all around it. So guys just went over on the grass, skated over, and went on the grass. But on the way out, I grabbed my car keys. Oh, God. And Bob Laux was our coach. He used to be a, a, a professional wrestler named Little Brutus. The guy's like tough guy, man, and, and a tough coach. But he had a sense of humor. And I'm like, Laux, he's not going to care. So I go out. And now they're on the other side on this bank. And there's Amboni entrance and everything. And I'm on the other side. And it's me, Dubber, Damon Lankow. You know, they're in Philly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and Mark Hurley, I believe, and maybe Mike Hurley. We were, we were, we were squat into this car. So I go out and I'm like, he said, do you guys want hot chocolate? And like, they're going, no. And they're going, no. And so Lauxie's going, no, don't leave. But now I know. I said, I'll just ask him a question because yeah. we're taking the car. We're going to McDonald's. I'm doing this. So yeah. I said, I'm just going to ask a question. We're far enough away that when they say no, I'm going to say, I thought you meant to hot chocolate. So we get in the car. <laughs> Listen, we drive to McDonald's in the car. I got my skates on. Okay. <laughs> and now. The gas leak is long over, apparently. So I, I pull around the corner like, like, like I'm doing donuts and shit. But there's a there's a snow bank, which is rare in Tri Cities, man. But there's a snow bank, and I go into it, and I don't see that the curb is right under the bank. And so the car, boom, I hit it, and now the, the wheel is at an angle like this, and it's going like that. So I go in. I, I just go, fuck it. Let's just go in and order chocolates. So we get breakfast. We all eat breakfast. And we get these, I get 30 hot chocolates to go back, like to butter up Lauxy. So I get out in the car and I realize the rink is right there, but I can only turn left. <laughs> so I go left and I go all the way around Tri Cities and come back. So it takes like 28, 30 minutes. So now, like the boys are in there practicing. And I get back. And I've got these hot chocolates that are freezing. They're freezing at this point. The heat was broken in the car, so they're freezing. So I get in, and they're at practice, and Lauxi Lauxi is fucking livid. And he comes over, what the fuck are you thinking? I said, Bob, I asked you if you wanted, I said, I got him for the, I asked you if you wanted a hot chocolate. You said no. He goes, sit on that fucking bench. And I sat (laughs) on the bench, and the whole team got skated while I watched. (laughs) Wow. The dude, I just, I drank the chocolate like it was fucking 104 degrees. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> the boys were pissed they said what do you want me to fucking do they they forgave me because it was a good story yeah oh man that's, that's classic unreal, man oh god oh uh, yeah. i had a, a quickly i know we've kept you a long time here man i we really do appreciate you but i, I gotta bring up gotta bring up shorzy uh show you're on it's it's unbelievable unfortunately my nine-year-old is always quoting uh yeah, I know. It's hard. To, well, the key. Well, all the kids. Why? I mean, it's it's a it's a great show. I I have a million questions about it, but just wanted to ask you how you, how that all came about for you, uh, and the show and joining it. Okay, and before that, I want to know something. You know, my favorite music video. One of them is the Grateful Dead "Touch of Gray." Did you think of that when you came up with your logo? Well, that's the one with the two us and the the skulls. Yeah. 
Yeah. Actually, that's like we have them like what three kind of three. Yeah, that was kind Riley. of secondary. Yeah, that was kind of a, our secondary one. But uh, were you thinking? I like no, I, no, it was kind of just. Song, uh, way, it was right, just yeah. kind of. Watch the video when we're done. Watch the video for Touch of Gray, and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, cool. Okay. Um, anyway, so. The question was, uh, what Shorzy? How did it get started? Yeah, like how did you? Yeah, like it, you're yeah. a natural. I mean, it, it, we were talking oh, yeah. about this earlier. Like, the, I love the show. Like, it's unbelievable. Thanks. But anyway, like, how, hey, how did this all come about? It's as close to Philadelphia hockey as you're going to get, right? That's if right. That's team, right. If there's one city that should identify with the Sudbury Blueberry Bulldogs in pro yeah. hockey, I would think it's Philadelphia. So, guys, this is the thing, man. I came back. Without really dissecting it all, I, I mean, I, I felt I was going to play a long time in the NHL. I was a rookie of the year in the minors. Like I said, those stories I was telling you, I had 21 goals my first year, yep. and I had 34 fights, 256 minutes, man. My favorite of the – like, I grew up a Canadians fan, and I don't I, – like, I remember the jersey I had was Chris Nyland. I could remember his stats, so he was always obviously on my mind. People forget, Knuckles had 21 goals, man. He had, like, 200 minutes, 21 goals, 19 another year. Like he was, you know, way more of a, of a talented player than people remember that, that people think because fights last on the Internet. And, you know, when he went through his turmoil, they were like, you know, he's a tough guy. And he was he had a lot of balls. He more picked up yeah. for his teammates than anything. But I really like that because I'm saying maybe, maybe I can do that. So I was proud of that year because I thought, you know, if guys like Turner Stevenson are here and, and, and you know, Knuckles and I liked Bob Ganey's two way. And, right. you know, there's things about my game that I think could benefit. So anyway. I. uh after that year, and I, I didn't have a good time with Michelle Terrian. I, I hated him, to be honest. Right. Thought he was really ignorant. But again, I, I don't. I, I for for a while there was some hard feelings, but I didn't communicate well. At no point did I go in and, and shake his hand and say, "Let's talk about this." Or you know, I mean, I could say he started it like a two year old, but that's stupid. And you know, I thought I should play more in Montreal, but I get now the way two way contracts work and how much goes into that. They were bringing me along. I don't think they realized how much of a bad time I was having in the minors due to Michelle. But I never brought it up. And, like, again, people look at the games played and they think that I have something against the Canadians. They're always my favorite team. Like I said, I thought Ray Jean Hull maybe should have played me more. But I don't have any hard feeling. He treated me nice. He treated me as a human. Right. He would work with me. He would phone me. You know, he told me straight out, straight out one day. I'm like, well, why did you pick me eighth if you're going to bring me up and give me one shift against Domi? And he'd be like, well. I, I wouldn't have picked you eighth because I don't think you're a good enough skater. Somewhere up there, but he, I'm going wide. He goes, no, I love you as a player and everything. And, you know, with its work, but he goes, you know, you want to. So he was always really nice, even right. in, in those times of telling me what I didn't want to hear. Alan Vigneault, I don't know. He was nice enough. I'd get called up. I understand that you wouldn't put me in the starting lineup. Like, you know, it's all right. <clears throat> so the point is, there was never really that hard feelings. I chose not to go back to camp. And when that happened, I, I busted my ankle. And I, uh, I made that decision, right? I didn't have right. to make that decision. What killed for years wasn't just that I made it. It was that the next year, they had a record number of injuries. And all my mm, buddies that uh, I was playing with, like uh, Aaron Asham and, and Matt Higgins in particular, got up and, and you know, got a chance. And, yeah. and I was like, you know. But, again, I'm not dwelling on anything. It was hard to take for a while, largely because I almost wish it had not been my fault because it probably would have been easier to blame somebody. Yeah. But, you know, so I'm living with that. I went back to school, like I'd said earlier, and I was far removed. But, you know, I got on the film. I got on a film set. Um, I, I, <clears throat> when I say I blew all my money, and I did, I got to put this in perspective first because I say that and people almost laugh like I was MC Hammer and I was buying gold floor. <laughs> <laughs> this is the AI, Alan yeah. Iverson. Yeah. Yeah. My, yeah. my signing bonus was $1.25 million. And I remember my my I had the most in the draft because you can only get two point five five overall. Didn't matter how you got it, right? Right. So I got one point two five straight up, and I think it was like four thirty a year or something. Whereas Damon Lankow who went fifth, three picks before me, my my teammate, yeah. he got the same two point five five, except his bonus was eight thirty or something. He was getting paid eight thirty, and again, he was in Tampa Bay. The tax worked it out better for that anyway. For sure. But anyway, so. Not that I even give a fuck about the money, man. Not that I right. swear when I when I 
was told I signed. Bob Lauchs, that coach I told you about, goes, go in the dressing room. The fax is coming out. And the fax came out and said 150000 I freaked out. I freaked out. And meanwhile, that was just increments. That was the first increment. And I, I went, well, I fucking signed for <laughs> 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 He said, you just signed for $1.25 million. Settle the fuck down. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I had just pawned off everything. I pawned off my car, the one before that. I pawned off... Um, CDs, like I just didn't have, you know, my, my parents, my dad was a teacher. My mom wasn't. They came out with me. They, they, they had a bad thing happen to their house when they rented it out. Insurance didn't cover it. Like there was, so I, I wasn't asking them for money and I'm on 60 bucks a week. So, and not only that, I'd sign with signature rookies, which blocked out the logo. They paid the player and I went and got a credit card. So I was like, on that deal that I showed them and they went bankrupt. So now I owe like 13 grand that I, I'm getting 60 oh, bucks a week. No. So yeah, wow. so I was like so when I saw that I freaked out anyway. So <laughs> here's the thing. I ended up getting 1.25 million, right? So the first thing I did was buy my parents a Jeep Cherokee. You know who I called? Danny Cleary's father, uh Kevin Cleary back wow. here. Me yeah. and Danny Danny was also represent, represented by IMG. We're the only two players on the mainland and you know largely you're not I, I don't want to get into it but when mike barnett wayne gretzky's agent signed me the first thing my dad said if you think terry's good you got to go to harbor grace newfoundland right now and see this kid cleary then he was gone i say i played i was the only junior in canada at 14 yeah until the next year Cleary went and did Curry. the same mm. so anyway i called kevin i'm like hook it up man fucking cherry red it's fully loaded get her done did that i don't want to get into i don't know again i don't care but it's their business but you know some things happen to the house and i took care of that okay then i buy myself i go out i don't know shit about cars or anything and lanks bought a viper and he goes on second thought that's probably a bad decision to roll into camp in a viper so i was like oh, i'll get a camaro like you know like it's just that just like that so i just bought it again i buy it with cash right i don't know because i just, i got a financial advisor he's putting the money away point is now, those things, what have we talked about so far? Me and Lanks, you know what we also did? The winners of the awards in Tri-City, if you won an award, you got to go on a cruise with some fans that paid for it, right? So me and Lanks were like, geez, why, why should eight of us go on a cruise? So I'm not going to say we took the whole team, but there was a few guys that wanted to go, and we're like, just because you didn't win an award. So we bought them cruises, oh. right? Then I brought some of my friends that were there along the way with me, that I never would have done it without, right? Um, they, I got them a cruise, right? So now, when I, I don't know about tax. So my, the taxes in Montreal then, in Quebec, were 58%. Oh, my, holy shit. My, my yeah. agent got four. My financial advisor got two. So 64% of that's gone. Now, if right. you do the math on what I just told you, it's almost gone, Yeah. right? But I, because I got 435 grand or something, but I don't know anything to me. Taxes, when I go buy a candy bar, there's 17 cents extra that I got to pay. <laughs> right. So <laughs> I don't go on what I get. I, I don't know. I'm, it's not a, a complaint so much as I just didn't know. So right. now it's, so I'm not going to complain about making 67, five us in the minors for three years, but you know, and I did get called up quite frequently. I didn't play a lot, but I'm just saying I'm not that. So that money, was was I didn't really ever get a chance to be extravagant with it or anything. Right. Um, that's just the, the way it went, right? So when I'm telling the story, you know, don't picture some guy out getting blowing hookers every night. You know, <laughs> it, it wasn't that. It was just like, you know, I yeah. got money and this needs to be done. So um, so the money's blown. I go back to school and I'm playing senior hockey for five or 650 bucks a game. The league here is real good league, but it wasn't like a fighting. And I did fight Langer twice, Darren Langer, Langdon. And it would happen, but like it wasn't really. Um, what I'm saying is that when I say that we get paid to play, a lot of people associate it with the Quebec League, that there's a lot of fighting. Right. Um, you know, it's here. If, yeah, you piss someone off, you were Newfoundlanders, like people fight, but it's not the first thing that you're doing going to the rink. Um, probably like 90s WHL. So, um, from the point of view that I mean, there's no like goons going around, but everybody right. has a bit spark. So anyway, then we get up to Danielle. I had a little tiny bit of money. I can't remember what it was. It was, 
I believe the Habs, something happened. Uh, the ownership went back to, I, I had, I had money in, in Molson, I think. And when the team changed hands, we got paid out. It was like 70 grand. And I'm not going to say what it is, but a, a guy I used to play with, he was actually president of a team I used to play for, came over and gave me a pitch. And uh, it turns out he needed the money, and I thought he was rich. So we gave him all of that, and it was gone in three months. Oh, so hmm. I got nothing. Okay. God. I've got to sell the house. We lived on the water. We had a pool. We lived right on the water, could fish every morning. Um, we had eight acres, 10 acres, I believe. And I had to sell that for $280,000 because I was desperate. Okay. Hmm. What happened was the bank called and they said, we've, we've been emailing you for months and I wasn't getting it. I'm like, well, my insurance, I don't want to get into it. I don't want to blame her or anything. But she was, and I didn't see this. So I get hold of them. They go, you got two weeks to sell your house or we're taking it. Oh, I'm going, fuck. what? Okay, so the same house right now, right now on Indian Meal Line, if you want to look at houses there in Newfoundland, is selling for a million. Okay? Shh. Now, this was, I guess, 2015 or 16. So time has gone by, but not that much appreciation has happened to these houses. I had to sell it for like 280 or something. So just a crack not even even almost so i had to go up to toronto and jerry my book had just come out jerry d a canadian comedian had seen had read the book so he's like you know you want to come up and do some comedy you can open up he actually didn't he said come up we're going to write a, a, a tv show together and that subsided he got family feud and he had other he, he's in a show called mr d here and he's a great stand-up comedian but i thought i'd be like working for him he says no you're, you're opening for me in oshawa tonight i go out now i'm depressed i'm up there i got no money uh, I've blown everything. My, I've, I'm, I'm raising my buddy's kid, B.J. Young, who passed away, okay. played in the American League at 35. <laughs> yeah, for Cincinnati. Um, so they were. And Penny Lane's just born. I, I, I gotta, I gotta do something here. And Danielle and I were getting divorced. The timing didn't look great. But I'm like, I mean, from the kid's point of view, it probably looked like I left them and went to Toronto. But I had no right. money. Like the film I just gotten in, but there was no. Now there's all year round. We're protected. There's unions. All of that. But at the time, well, there was unions, but there just wasn't work here all the time. So when when it's great to make a decent dollar, it was hard work. I guess I was making two fifty a day, maybe three hundred. But it was it was a lot of work, and then you'd have five months with no work, right? Right. So when you owe all those bills, you can't really live like that. So the mm -hmm. book come out. So I said I'll probably sell some books when I'm opening for Jerry. But I'm like depressed, and I'm like, what a hard time to do comedy, man. Right. I'm being there, going. I had a place with a futon, nothing else in it. I'd go down and get a breakfast sandwich and a coffee, three ninety nine in Parkdale, right there on Queen Street West, every day. And then I'd at night eat anything from craft dinner to those, whatever they call it, the, the, the ramen, soup, powdered soup, yeah, ramen stuff. I'm telling you, man. And then, so I had to do comedy that whole summer. You know, help me out, Dale Howardchuck. Oh no shit! Oh really? And, yeah, and he gave me. He goes. He came downtown, man, and I. Jerry's like, if you want to keep doing it, you gotta, you gotta work the bars. So I was down like at the comedy bar at at Yuck Yucks downtown, getting like fifty bucks a show, right? And I got to keep. And so Dale knew that and saw that. I wasn't buddies with him, but he knew Shane Corson and some people that I'd stayed in touch with that were my real good buddies. So he said, "Come on out." And he, and I spoke at his event, and there was a bunch of like Hall of Famers out there. He has a golf tournament fundraiser in uh, Mus Muskoka every year, and so then 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 I got to know like Ally Afraidy. Uh, oh God, Gary Lehman, like really well. There was other people there that I know, like, you know, Grant Fuhrer was there. I introduced myself, but these guys like that really stayed on board. And then like, Al's like, do you want some NHL alumni games? And then Steve Shuck gave me some, right? He was my assistant coach in Montreal. And so it kind of helped put me on the map, gave me enough money to come home here and figure it out. So I got back here. Now there's a show starting up. The people that I worked for on Republic of Doyle, where I was crew the whole time, right? Jump how high for five or six years. Now we're doing a show called Frontier. Okay. In the summertime, there's a one-off movie here that's not not associated with the same company, but they needed workers. And I knew my job at this point. And the movie was called Maudie, a quiet little movie about Maude Lewis, a, a, a painter from Nova Scotia. And we made uh, Trinity, Newfoundland into Digby, Nova Scotia. And Who's the male lead in the movie? Ethan Hawke. Ethan oh, Hawke wow. come to our games with Kiefer Sutherland. 
I think he, he'd be lying. He was humoring me, saying he knew who I was. But we used to go to a place called Bonanote after every single game, me and Course and whoever else wanted to come, usually all the boys. And so I'm going by. I could get fired for this. I know it. But Ethan's sitting there, and I'm he's in the green room, and I throw one of the copies of my book in. Because I'm like, if he reads this, he's going to know exactly. Like, he was with me in those places. Like, mm -hmm. oh, so I do it. Okay. Three weeks go by. And I think it's the end of a long day. And I'm, like I said, the guy, I'm the first up and last. I'm head locations guy, one of them. And that's a lot of work. Anybody listening on a film set knows what I'm talking about. And I'm exhausted. And I sit and I'm, it's a, it's a, it's an October day, a late October day. And it's every once in a while we get those, um, real almost like a chinook wind but our weather comes late and stays late because of the icebergs in, in the spring it's often nippy cold coming off the ocean it might be oh it might say 25 degrees but it's not 25 degrees hmm. wind chill in like the summer june uh may june but then it gets normal and but we also get the other effect it's snowing in a lot of places and it's still like 16 17 degrees this one day is like 23 it's like october 25th and we're sitting there doing the, and i'm exhausted man i got a joint and I got a bottle of Jack, and I put the Jack here, and I fucking take a puff, and I'm like, oh, fuck, man. I'm exhausted, exhausted, missing my daughter. There's no Wi-Fi or anything in this tiny little place, so I can't talk to her, and I hear the footsteps coming up behind me, and I, and I see the shadow, and I turn around, and I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? It's Ethan Hawke. No and way. And sits down, and he goes, I read your book, and he said, it's not always about the games played. It's about the experience. And the friendships you make along the way. And I said, yeah, exactly. That's kind of why I wrote it. He said, I know. And he told me a story. And I think his friend was coaching. I don't know much about American football. I, I do about the NFL, but not the college. But it, I think it was Texas A&M. If it wasn't, it was one of those southern places that someone had coached for like 20 years. And they, could, they had any NFL opportunities. And he said, I know this guy. And he said, it reminds me a lot of you. And he said, what I think you should do is start getting into acting or auditioning or something. He said, you're right. You're clearly creative. And he said, you got all that emotion inside. Because when I started telling the stories, he goes, you're lighting up when you're talking about all this. He said, take that emotion and put it into whatever character comes down the middle. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can be, he said, so I know that you can be really happy or really sad. I know that now. And I was like, OK, like, you know, and we got back and it, we went out to a place called the Bull and Barrel, one of my favorite. It's a rock and roll bar downtown, really small one. They play music videos. And we sat there and I was with Ethan Hawke and Gary Sexton. And I'm having a beer, and Ethan goes, I do it. Now, I've had two or three beers, and I call the people I used to work with. I'm like, boys, I've been on Alan Hocko in particular. I said, I've been on crew for this long, and I know you're supposed to be in the union to have an audition. But I, however I can do that, now, I've done a couple of stunts. I didn't know that that went to, for them, like, you know, easy stuff for Republic of Doyle. Uh, you know, we need someone else to fall down in the background kind of thing, right? Never a role that I spoke, but a couple of times I got like, I don't know, hit by a car, seemingly, you know, but so I didn't realize. And they were like, well, you only need one more credit to get in the union. It's not that much of a stretch. Sure. So I go in and I audition for this British cook and I'm horrible. I have the accent, I'm horrible. And on and I, I, I had a flipper. I was going to get my teeth fixed like permanently. But honestly, to that point, it would have just been a waste of money. I, I couldn't really afford it and everything else. So that's why I was waiting and I was waiting to get in the union. Right. And it was right that time I'm getting in the union. So, but what happens is that I take my flipper out to have a sip of coffee after the God awful uh, uh, audition. And then they go, wait, we've got this thing for a British soldier at the very beginning. So this is on Netflix. It's called frontier. It's like five seconds into the show. Season one, just put it on. It's the te It's right at the beginning, before the credits or anything come up. It's the teaser. And I got my hands behind my back. And now I only got to say, please have mercy. Right? So I go to the audition, and the, the girl there, her name is Danielle Irvine. She's the casting director. And she's like, get to my house right now. We got to record you doing this. And I, she goes, I, I, it, it, I, I never thought of it. She goes, like, get over here right now, because I think you're going to get it. So I go there. She goes, and so I'm like, what? Please, please have mercy. She goes, say it like a fucking British soldier. I'm like, I don't know how to, she goes, it's three words. So I said, okay, please have mercy, please have mercy. And I, and I started to think about how I was in, I, I don't know. People ask me, I, I don't know how I turned it on, but I started crying. Yeah. So, cause she goes, this scene requires someone to like be scared crying. Like, so I was like, okay, so they saw it. I get the call. 
yo, I'm getting it. And I realized one of the people that saw it, actor, producer, is Jason Momoa. And Momoa had read my book. Now, he's just coming off um, Game of Thrones. He wasn't Aquaman yet. In a later story, I'll tell you next time I'm on, I was with him when he got the word he was going to be Aquaman. Wow. But anyway, he has, he has read my book. He's a hockey fan. He's from Des Moines, Iowa. Real humble beginnings, and never learned. He said I didn't have money for skates, but I could play roller hockey. So he like he, I taught him to skate after all this, right? Wow. He had a shot on him. He was like like Sheldon Surrey. He had a shot, man. But um, <laughs> he uh, yeah, he couldn't stop. Anyway, <laughs> so <laughs> they give me the role, and I get in, and then Momoa takes a liking, comes in, meets my dad, meets my family, and everything, and I happen to be with him one day. But all this happened, and um, his assistant, I was having a beer with him downtown at a place called Merchant Tavern. Again, still mostly crew, but now I'm in the union, and he's telling me he's going to get me these stunts gigs and everything, so I'm like, okay. And his assistant had bad news. I can't remember what it was, maybe a tragedy in the family, but she went back to um, California, and he just looked over at me. This is about 2016, I suppose, and he said, uh, maybe 17 by now, and he said, um, you want to be my personal assistant for a few months? We're going to go over to Europe for th- three months, and we're going to do season three of Frontier, and then I'll put you in a couple other things, but you'll like learn at least how to be a fighter when it comes to stunts because there's all kinds of stunts. And I went over there with these guys. I went over to Europe. We we shot when we went over like a month before the rest of the crew that I used to be on, right? Now I'm not crew anymore. Locations jump out high. Now I'm telling the director, well, we're going to go over there. If you want to talk to Jason, call me. For, like, it's wild, right? If wow. You want to talk to Jason, go through me. My second phone call was Jimmy Fallon. I'm going, this is fucked, right? <laughs> yeah. This is oh, right? So then we go over there, and the, the, we, <clears throat> the things that we had planned, especially for Frontier Season 3, a lot of them were in these castles. So we were in a place called um, Bambra. Bambra, and it was... Uh, about four or five hours above uh, north of Newcastle. It was almost in Scotland. So it was, a, it was in England, but not anywhere near London or any of that. So we go up, and so we're on our own. I mean, these little towns, these towns, like the, the biggest place by far was Alnick, Alnick, but it's spelled A-L-N-W-I-C-K. That's where the Harry Potter castle is for real, the real mm, one. Okay. Where they, so it's like 10,000 people, and that was maybe a 20-minute drive. We're in places that are like, 300 people like right and we're in these little cool bars listening to music i'm with momoa the whole time like it's so small that a lot of people don't even know who he is so it's wild we do all of that right now i'm doing all the stunts with no tooth because yeah. you know in all these it requires somebody that looks you know like that require like you look, gotta look beat up or a soldier and a lot of people in the 1700s had no teeth so yeah. that's what the show is so then he puts me in another movie called braven and and he comes back here, and you know we parted ways. I hear from him once in a while. I know it's Jason Momoa. I don't bother him, but you know after after the other night he sent me a message. So um, anyway, now now I get back, and now I'm here, and I'm going in for crew, but I'm getting calls. They're like, hey, we need a gangster in this movie, right? We need a we need a pimp. We need a drug dealer. We need a skeet. We need because the tooth. Now it's a, it, it's often about a look. And now yeah, right. in union, now we're getting more shows here. Right now, Hudson and Rex just started, which is still going. I played a villain in, in episode nine. I'm starting to now and, and get days on set are, are, are now they're good pay. They're yeah. five times what I was making per day the first time. So I'm like, OK, now I'm starting to get back and I owe a lot of money, but I'm starting to pay it off. This is great. And I'm telling this story. I, I, I was telling the story on Chicklets, how I played a boxer. And the it's funny because I, I went on spitting Chicklets and literally the next day, um, and, and we couldn't reproduce, like, because I got, I got the flipper, so they wanted the boxer to hit me. The show was called Little Dog. Joel Hines was the actor, and he had to hit me. And they said, how are we going to get the tooth flying away? So we, I literally cracked off. The director did it for me, John Vacher. He cracked off a, a, an actual chiclet, and we put it up there, and the guy hits me, and it flies out of my... So I actually spit a chiclet. <laughs> like, it's un- fucking believable. Like, I think I was the only person in North America that for work had to spit a chiclet that day. And, right. I, went, uh, <laughs> oh, and I was telling this story. On, uh, I think it might have been on chiclets, but maybe it was on another pod at the time. I can't really remember. But Kiso was Jared Kiso, who writes Letter yeah, to in Jersey. Yeah. He was listening. So I get a call from casting. Now, again, I'm doing it around here. I never thought I'd go into another province. That's a whole new ball of wax there. So uh, they 
I, I, they, they pretty much tell me that, you know, we got this role for season eight in Letterkenny and it's a Newfoundland team. And, you know, do, do you still have a tooth missing? I'm like, yeah. They're like, okay, perfect. Part one done. Uh, can, can you, I, I, I can't remember what she said, but I was led to believe it was mine to lose. So she said, go, go do the audition right now. I was on the way to coach hockey school and my two buddies, Scotty Bray and Zach O'Brien, who Zach was the guy who called me to play the fucking game the other night. Yeah. Zach yeah. Goes, yeah. Yeah. Come on down. And so Zach, Zach played the other guy with me, and he doesn't want to be on camera at the best of days. Zach doesn't do many interviews. But we were like, fuck, I got a chance to be on Letterkenny. So Scotty took the fucking camera with my phone. I went through it with him. And by the time I left, the, I, I put the, not much great reception in the rink. So we just recorded it. I went outside, sent it through, came in. By the time I left, I'm driving home. E, you got a message. Uh, and it, it, it's the script. It's everything. I got the role. I'm like, oh, fuck. Oh, no my way. No shit. Get up. I do Letterkenny. It's the last fucking day of filming. And they got their rap party that day. And what Kiso tells me, he's like, this is written for you here. But he goes, I've only been to Newfoundland one day. His favorite show is Coldwater Cowboys, his favorite show in the world. And that's a show, I think you guys, you had a version of it, Crab Fisherman in Alaska. Mm, well, we yep. got our, our Canadian version of that here. It's called Coldwater Cowboys off the coast of Newfoundland. So he loves it. But a lot of my lines are written like those characters say them. And I'm going, yeah. Kiso... Like say say a lot of Newfoundlanders drop drop their H's and add them. So like Ed Hurley would be head early, right? You're, you're, the word Ed is head. How's head doing? My how's head? How's <laughs> yeah. head doing? Right. So I get it, but I go keys. There's dialects all over Newfoundland. Where I'm from, they wouldn't say that. Now I don't doesn't I don't have to be from where I'm from, but I'm going. I I'd have to think about those things because it's hard to differentiate. But I can do a Towny accent, what they call it here, like that. And the reason is because I used to imitate, now I got a bit of one anyway, but I used to imitate a guy that was the Zamboni driver growing up. His name is Tony Fonce Paolo, right? He's a legend in Mount Pearl. He used to wear like fucking tuxes to the junior games on the weekend and the senior <laughs> game that my dad was coaching. And like he's a legend. He had a stroke a few years ago. But um, so he's in a home now. But it, it, I, so I used to imitate him, but Fonts was more like, what are you, Ryan, boy? What are you going to go play hockey? Are you, what? what, you think you're a big shot, do you? So we used to always get him going, right? But, so I go, I can do that. And I kind of did it in the letter, Kenny. But then he's like, okay, so anyway, so in that particular scene, he's like, okay, so the things I wrote, he goes, do that once. We're going to leave the camera on. Because all we had to do was taunt the bench. And when I showed up, I knew the other guy. He'd left a long time ago. But at Patrick Cook, I'd played hockey with his two brothers. So I knew him well. But I just hadn't seen him in like 15 years. So I'm like, okay. We're gonna, I said, okay, so I'm going to do townie, like Monday Pond more than anything. And he goes, okay, I know exactly where we're going to go with this. So we started like kind of riffing off each other on top of what Jared had written, which is what you ended up seeing. And then for Shorzy, um, you know, this is the same character, but Jared Jer told me we had lunch that day and he said, I've got a, a, a great idea for this going going forward and I might call you back. So I'm like, OK, but he didn't call me in a year and I just thought that's over. Like I didn't really I didn't like, rely on it. I just thought, OK, but then he phoned me back. Same sort of thing. A girl, like some girl phoned me the casting and there was she was like, um, I need you to do this right away. Like and this at this point, I'm going like the same guy I already played. At this point, I think they just wanted confirmation. So they gave me like a lot more to say. And the way I was reading it, I'm like, I think I need to speed up this a bit. So my, my Ted Hitchcock is fonts from like kind of kind of sped up. Because I again I can do it without thinking, but now I just talk like this. What are you at, Ryan? Huh? What are you gonna yeah. go? With? What are you gonna play hockey? Are you what? Right? Like now, <laughs> so now I knew exactly what to do with it. Now, so that's Ted Hitchcock. The rest is history, except this part. I finally dug myself out of a hole my daughter's mother danielle we're divorced we're still friends real good friends she lives down the street we don't even have anything written up but if, if she's working i'll take penny lane if i'm yeah. you know penny lane's in there now she just walked out to my, my parents are driving her up to uh she got to get a present for a friend my parents weren't available danielle will get her like so we're we three of us work together we're all living in a small little area great That's awesome except the house i'm sitting in because I didn't have the most money to buy something, but her, like I said, her mom left for two years, just got back in September. I had to take a job in Calgary. We were both in debt, like I told you. Took a job in Calgary, opening a bar. She's great at that, made good money, and padded her resume. Now she got a job here. 
But for those two years, Penny Lane didn't want to leave. She's like, I, I don't want to leave. And I probably would have been best off going to Toronto, to be honest, if I wanted to maximize my potential with all this. And I do travel a lot, but now I made this my base because Penny Lane said, look, and Daniel knew she was coming back. It wasn't urgent to, for her to go, and she would have liked that. But Penny Lane's like, got my friends here and everything. And Penny Lane's in the acting union now as well. Oh, wow. And awesome. she's one of the best soccer players in Newfoundland. She's got, like, she's a very driven athlete. So not that that's what it's all about. I mean, she's third, she was 11 then. I'm like, you know, why would you want to leave? I get it. So I got to find a place then. I'm not going to rent. I'm going to find a place for us. So I only had five to $8,000 to put down. So there's only a couple of places in town that fit that bill that were clean, that were in a nice area. And I, so right now I'm in the bottom of Mount Pearl. It's like old school. The house is only 650 square feet, but it's right. The, there's a trail out back, a waterfall. It's, it's the house in the country. This is the early part of Mount Pearl built in 1961. My, my parents' house is only three or four houses. Well, 13 or 14 houses down it takes maybe five minutes to get there. Not even so on a nice little path. So it's perfect for me. And do you know whose house it is? It's Fonce's house. He had a stroke. He's an, it had nothing to do with me knowing oh Fonce. He wouldn't have known it. He couldn't function at that right. point. I hope he's doing better now. I know he's, I know he's struggling. Whatever. I, of course I know he's my friend, but, but I ended up and his brother happens to be my godfather, but only because they lived so close way back. I hadn't talked to Bert in 40 years. Right. Wow. But if I was Fonce's buddy. I used to come up here with him. And as I sit here, I'm sitting in the in the very person's house that I'm imitating on Shorezy. Wow. And no one shit. isn't connected to the other. It's a fluke. And That's but crazy. for those listening, I don't live in a town of 100 people. St. John's isn't huge, but it's 200. It's a quarter of a million. Right. right. And I'm in Mount Pearl, which is an outskirt. But I would have taken anything in the whole area. Quarter of a million people to pick from. And I'm in Fonce's house as I as I tell you this. story. <laughs> that is so crazy. That's crazy. Wow. Well, I know man. that took a while, boys, but I figured <laughs> that's all right. I gotta tell you the whole thing because Fonce deserved his due there, and Momoa and Hako and Kiso and everybody that helped me because of all the things that went wrong early in my hockey career, they went right in the in the late two thousand and tens and you know, right up until last night or Sunday night. Wow. Yeah. The, um I can only imagine uh, quickly. I, I know you got to get rolling here, but uh, right. how, how much fun is it on set do, for that with that show? Cause I, I mean, I'm crying the whole damn episode laughing and, and it's, if you're in hockey, especially I have people that, you know, like haven't been around hockey luck, like as lucky as I am. And you guys, uh, you guys played it, but uh, it, it just, I'm like, that's what it's like, man. It's like so much fun being in a locker room and, yeah. and just the way the banter and everything. But like, I can only imagine it's gotta be a blast. It's so surreal because it's like meta reality. I think they call it because we're mm -hmm. in there playing hockey players, which we are the best days are when we have the dressing room days. Yeah, because yeah sure. We put on our gear. Kiso loves to have us in there early. And I mean, for for a lot of reasons, I mean, an actor would probably benefit to be in there early, but I just mean, it's great on those days because we go in and as we're putting on our gear, we're telling these stories and he's got real hockey, but he wanted to be authentic. I, I heard from Bell Media, I'm not going to say who, and I'm not going to quote them, but I, I'm led to believe that they were a little bit off put by using actual hockey players, not actors. Now, I don't think, like, again, I was doing a little bit of acting. Nobody else was. But Joe Dolo is a, is a rapper for real. Right. Um, so Jonathan Diaby, third round pick to Nashville. But he, so, I mean, there's performance there. Um, and you got Morasti, you got the Nolans. Yeah. Um, you know, you know their history. Um, Goody played Junior A in Canada. Even Fish. Fish played Junior A and he played a year in pro overseas. So Kiso was very adamant. Even, even the background and everything, all the boys, they're from, they're for they're, they're, the uh, useless, they're all our real, yeah. real good friends now. But it's great because they're secondary, like actors. Like I'm not saying secondary, but in the show. Yeah. And like, so that's that. So we have fun, but we treat them in real life. Like, again, in a fun way. They're our peers. We invite them out. We all have, but you know, we joke about it. Well, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know I mean? <laughs> like, We'll be like, fuck you, Brinker. Go fucking fill the water bottles up. But even though yeah. it's never what he does, but you know, it's a lot of fun. And so yeah. all the guys with the most biggest hockey resume at this point also have the acting. So we can kind of 
I think it's it's meta reality and we joke around. But even those guys got stories. I'm not saying I don't want that to seem condescending. It's awesome. We're a family. We're in there. And, you know, they'll tell a story about Junior A or Midget or something. And then Jordan Nolan, who's got three Stanley Cups, yeah. will tell a relatable story. It really reminds you that hockey's so, like, it's all relative. Like, you know, and I've often said, I go to play junior hockey. And really, there was more similarities with the NHL dressing room than not. There's more money up there and everything. But there is a hierarchy. The leaders are leaders. The rookies got to pick up the pucks. When you get mm -hmm. up and they got to buy a huge fucking meal. But it's it's still... There's a lot of similarities, so we tell those, and it's really, it's almost like we're all sharing this love for hockey, but we're not really playing it. We're really <laughs> wild, but we, you know. And when we go out there before and we do those scenes, yeah, man, it's wild because, like, you know, it's when you see it, it, it if you, if you're moved and you think it's funny, or you're moved, and at times it tears your, you really like Shorzy has more of a heart to it than Letter Kenny. Um, so sometimes it tugs at your heartstrings, but we're feeling that as it's as it's happening, and we're doing it on the ice, and we're doing it with these hockey players. So we're still sharing experiences together. We're still teammates, right? Yeah. It's just in slightly, and we're put, still putting on our skates. Yeah, we're yeah. Still going, we're still telling the stories. We're still okay. Like so, a some of it doesn't feel like acting, right? Right. And we're we're. At this point, I, I think people, I, I think they're going to love three. I mean, if you liked one and two, three was the most fun I've had doing anything in my whole life. It was hard to oh, get through wow. a lot, a lot of the scenes, probably as much that it was well written as it is. We know each other now. It was hard to get through without busting out laughing. Oh, I'm sure. Oh, God. I can <laughs> right? only imagine so, that. That's, yeah. That, I mean, so I, I could say so much about it. I, look, I've worked on a lot of shows and what we'd like. We we all stay in the same hotel, and it doesn't really matter which hotel. Like right from day one, we're like, well, three of us could stay in that one, and you could get us nice Airbnbs all over town, Airbnbs, or we could go to this hotel, which is a lot less elitist or whatever you want to use, yeah. right? A lot less. It's not five star; it's a two and a half. But we'll all be together, and we can put beers in the middle in the tub, and we can. So yeah. each night erupts into hockey stories. We all go out together. Uh, uh, that's so gotta we'll, be awesome, man. It's so it's it's unlike. And and not only that, not only that, the girls who didn't have much of a hockey back, they do the same. Like hats off to them. Tasia yeah. Tellis came into it with a million followers. Man, she's in the hundred. She was the, the, the biggest star before she came in, and she didn't need Shorzy to elevate like we did. I'm the same. We needed it, but that we were here and like. Our, our public notoriety kind of rose. Hers, either I'm, I'm sure it did, but in a different way. She was already very popular. She was making mm -hmm. money. She was, you know, well on the. She's and, she, and the 300 is in Comic Con, so she, right. you know, she's going to expand on that for years. But she is great, and she could, if she wanted, stay anywhere she wants. She's got the best agent. But she's got she's here, right in that world, and she stays in the hotel with us. Right? It's fucking awesome. great. Everybody does. Crew does. Yeah. I don't know any other show. All the crew. And we all go out together from the bottom of the crew to Tassia Tellus to Kiso to the directors. And when it comes time on the weekend, we all, okay, let's go to a Sudbury Wolves game. Let's go to, and we all hang out together. There's no pretentious whatsoever. It's the most fun, fun environment I've had. The only thing I could actually compare it to is a hockey dressing room. Wow. wow. That's so cool. Well, I'm I'm super happy for you that you've been able to you know work yourself through the weeds uh, and and find say the, these opportunities because you know like you deserve it and uh, you know trials and tribulations of life right the ups and yeah. downs right is, adversity is just part of it I mean if there's you know a, a little piece of advice you could give to you know, the the young old listeners like what would that be because you persevered through so much and you got a great attitude and i just appreciate that and everything you do well thank you i appreciate it um i you know i thought about this i said like i'm in a position that there should be a message here whether i like it or not because i feel like kind of self-involved oh listen to me right so and some, one thing that annoys me is when some people go, look, if you follow your dreams, anything's possible and you will w succeed. But that's not the case. So many people are struggling out there and they're like, what the fuck are you talking about? You're on a TV show. I'm working at Tim Hortons. My mother and father just died. I got three kids. Mm -hmm. You know, like there's people out there, man, there's millions that don't have the money to even listen to this or have a phone, man. Right. Yep. And I get that. So it doesn't always work out. But I'm telling you this. 
At the bottom of all that, I told you in the middle of it, um, meaning I, I can't say that with, without thinking that I'm, I, I'm, I'm lying to some degree, and I don't want to be a hypocrite. But during all that time, man, I, it, there was a time in, in, in Toronto, I remember, during that crazy summer that I, you know, I left and we had no money right before I came back and did Frontier. And I was, it was subconscious. Well, some of it was conscious, but I don't smoke. And I was down. The first part of that, I didn't know when I was going to make money, right? So I hate to compare it to being homeless for real, but when I first went up, I didn't. So I would just spend the nights with headphones on, walking around. I'd go in Union Station because there was cameras and everything, and I'd sit on the bed. Like, I, again, I don't want to say homeless. I didn't reach out to anybody or anything I could have, but I was like, I got to figure this out, and like, I can't just go in and get a day on set and then have to pay for a, an Airbnb or whatever. So I, for at least two weeks, I'm thinking three, I just did that. I just walked around at night, and so, and I would pick up smokes on the ground and fucking smoke them like because i didn't have money for anything i don't smoke but i need to pass the time man it was the worst anxiety i've ever had in my life wow. and I, I i and you know people might say well there's and i get it and, and and i have had concussions and everything i know what that anxiety is about i know but i tell you this that when you're in bed even if you're prone to it or not you're going to be depressed right so a lot of people can identify so i i, I don't know man and a lot of those days it was like how am i going to wake up and get out of bed but I just kept per, – perseverance is one thing, but you can't really persevere unless you stay positive in your head, mm -hmm. right? Like, if you stay positive, and so whatever it is, like, writing helped me always. I'm an only child. It helped me to release nervous energy. Um, not all energies, not all anxieties depressing. Some of it's just nervous energy, like before a game. But mm -hmm. I would get that for seven days straight without a game in the summer. So, Jeez. like, so I – like, it, okay – if I didn't try to take that advice myself that I gave myself back then, or, you know, I guess subconsciously, and you, you stay, then I wouldn't have been ready to play for the Growlers because I had to be in shape. Mm. But people might like, and I know it's a little thing, and I don't go there and pump, pump weight every day like fucking Hacksaw Jim Duggan or something, but I, it's cardio. I don't have time to work out with, with weights, but I do cardio every day. I still skate with the boys. I, I pursued it. I went back and, you know, I worked in a, in a right before all that. For one month when I got back, I worked in a factory overnights that boxing lotto tickets for minimum wage was like $379. And I'm telling you, you know how hard that was to walk in and people going, hey, Terry, like, way to go. Like, how was that fight with Domi? And I'm going, and they know and I know that I'm getting $13 an hour. And I'm going to walk out of this week with $379, right? And it was like, you want to talk. There's one thing trying to be humble. This was ta like taking a sack of hammers across the face twice before every workday, punching in and just going, okay. Mm. I would put headphones on and listen to f philosophy. These, these, and just like not, not in self improvement, just like to get my mind off what I was doing. Like, what am I? And, and people knew it and they're looking around me. People that used to get my autograph that I went to school with that, like, are going, what the fuck is a first round pick doing in here? Well, what I was doing was trying to do something to make something and stay positive, man. I know it's so hard. It's so hard, and not everybody it's going to work for, but what I do know is that if you do persevere and be positive, the chances get a lot better, right? Mm -hmm. I can't guarantee it's going to work for everybody, but the chances get a lot better. And once I stop tripping over my bottom lip about fucking my career up and, and you know, um, this guy and this coach didn't use me and that and just said, you know, this is life. Whatever the case is, here I am right now, right? And we got to do something. So I don't want to be fucking pretentious, but... Honestly, stick with it. There's some people out there that know exactly what I'm talking about. And who knows? All I can say is that if you probably won't get to play a fucking home game in front of your friends. Uh, you know, you, you probably won't be on a film set, but I bet you your life will be better in the near future if you just start thinking that way. Yeah. Well, amazing advice. It is amazing. And I, let me ask you this, TR. If, uh, you saying I got a chance now? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> we're like brothers. <laughs> yeah, you're further ahead than a lot of people. <laughs> I'm going to do it. So you get a yeah. shot, Nas. Who knows? Uh, you never know. <laughs> oh, man, dude. We, we, we're we so uh, happy and proud for you. And uh, thank you for, for your time, man. I, I, I feel like we have so many things written down. We, we got to do another one with you, man, 2.0, because uh, there's just so much to you. And we really do appreciate you, man. Hey, Amen. Whenever you guys want, I'm serious. I, I I do you guys too. Look, I had so many offers, man. I really did, and um, I don't mean that in a, you know, <clears throat> like monetary. I mean requests is a better word to do yeah. to do uh, 
podcasts like this. But uh, Riley, I, I don't, I don't just respect you for your playing. It's from what you're what you're doing now, and your voice. And a lot of people look up to you. And uh, I don't want to say that. I prioritize based on old hockey players, but I think your situation transcends hockey. And I think you're helping a lot of people out, um, including me. I had, we're going to talk on my podcast soon. I had Riley on a few years ago and uh, a lot of what he's doing now really helped with me too. And that's another story for another day. Well, right. appreciate that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I uh, would love to talk to you more about that. Again, we could probably talk about that in 2.0 and, and, you know, get jumping back on your pod there, but I appreciate that. And, you know, it's like all these, you know, you say the trials and tribulations, the the adversity, it's, you know, the, the dream is, 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 is one thing and then how it plays out is another. And, um, and, and it's, it's, it's only for, it's, it's only to teach you lessons and help you grow and evolve. Right. And it's like, you can never script how you got to where you are today and, and myself included. And, um, you know, it's like the, you know, the intelligent conscious energy whatever you want to call it is it's got different plans sometimes and it just takes uh a, you know a little different mindset and 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 shifting maneuvering and uh like you said you said it best i mean you have to keep a positive attitude because once you don't the, the world gets dark quickly so um exactly. you know props to you brother for for being a beacon you know like a, a beacon of light and a beacon of hope for people that are going through the shit and uh you know you, you got an amazing personality and you're able to to take you know what, what you would most people would be like unfortunate series of events but you just spin them and, and uh and spit them out to, with, with some level of uh positivity and humor and hope so well thank you that was well said you know after this Maybe you can be my PR agent. Who knows? I, 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 like, to, I like the cut of your jib, they say around Newfoundland. They like to, <laughs> likes the cut of your jib, bye. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Oh, man. So this has been awesome, man. Yeah. Uh, I really appreciate the time. Well, we really appreciate the time. And uh, it's uh, it's a, an amazing story. And so it's so happy for you, you know, to to, to, to hear the joy and, the, you know, the just well, the, the positivity in it all it's just surely surely well, I'm, also, I'm also coming off one of the best days of my life sunday so i appreciate yeah. you noticing guys uh thanks for having me on the, my podcast is called tales with tr and uh i always forget to plug anything i'm doing i'm on uh stay tuned on terry ryan 2020 that's my instagram but i got two books out tales of a first round nothing and uh tales with tr fights film and folklore and they're all stories like we've been talking about today it's yeah. awesome. Actually, you've heard half the book today. I'm serious. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> still, still a good read. Still oh, got to yeah, read for it. Sure, for sure. That's awesome. Well, appreciate you, brother. We'll be in touch, and uh, you take care, and keep doing, keep doing you, man. It's uh, it's it's inspiring, to say the least. Thanks, boys. Thanks All for right. having me. And uh, whenever you like my services, I'm here for you. Big thank you to our friend Terry Ryan, TR. What a guy. Oh, my God. Dude, we could have talked for four hours. Longest He's pod almost of all time. Two. I think it's our longest one yet, but uh, there was other things we had on our I list. I know. We and, didn't even get to him. Oh, man. What a guy. Um, so happy for him, man. Like, that, that's just the coolest thing. And yeah. the way things have turned out for him, and hopefully they'll probably keep getting better. Yeah. Um, for him i would think so he's on the map now he's on he's, the map he's dude. on the map he's he, he's charismatic he speaks well he's obviously found his groove and yeah i wish him the best man yeah. he's, he, he he'll do fine i think it's it's challenging sometimes for guys to kind of find themselves reinvent themselves if you will i mean and he's also again a first round or eighth overall you think yeah, about man. like how embedded you are into that identity of you know living up to that expectation and then having to figure yourself out and finding it on the back end which seems to have so you know he, he is amazing on shorzy on oh shore. god I he's, mean, he's he's probably my favorite character just because i love the way doofy's talking yeah, you know oh, like yeah. and i meant to even bring up my boy roper with him who's with the maple leafs and he he'll get to talking and you know, I'll say he, he'll say something in that, you know, the way they speak and uh, his accent. And he always says, yeah, cats and dogs, boys, cats and dogs. He always says, <laughs> oh, yeah, he's it great. makes me laugh. I meant to say that to him. But anyway, great talk to him. We'll catch up with him again, hopefully. Yeah, absolutely. I definitely have a 2.0 down the pipe. Yeah, for sure. It's that time, Nast. Is it? Oh, yeah. Right now? Right at this moment. Oh, my God. It's time for clear questions brought to you by Clear. 
clear rum rigs get oh, it yeah. in you it's so good it'll turn you back the other way <laughs> please go to clearrum.com slash shop type in nasty 2023 and you get 35 percent off pa residents only great deal and get it in you i know you have i have a lot i can keep seeing a fresh set of cans <laughs> every time i come every here week, and- baby Baller hit us after. up with the clear questions, bro. Starting us off, we got Noah Sharp. Sharpie wants to know, being new to Flyers fandom, what is something about the history of the team someone may not know at first glance? Hmm. Where, if where, you're where new, start? there's a lot you wouldn't know, I, I mean, guess. The, 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 big, the big dog information, like Flyers won two Stanley Cups. Almost 50 years ago. Almost 50 years ago. It's been about 49 74, years. 74, 75, but... I, <clears throat> I would like, you know, it's, it sounds weird saying because we we know it, and I'm sure every fan, Flyer fan knows it, but, you know, they were kind of the creators of, well, they created the Broad Street Bullies and yes. identity throughout the organization, but essentially created a standard of toughness that at that time of the uh, of time and space back then, they the, every other team followed, yes, followed suit, did. right? I mean, yep. they all started getting into tough guys and... Uh, it landed up, you know, it landed up being their identity for a long time. Um, so uh, yeah. obviously start there, but anything else come to mind now? Well, that's, I mean, that's really, that is the gist of the Flyers, especially if you're a new, a new fan. Um, they did start that and everyone tried to create it after they did. So, uh, and like I said, that they did win two Stanley Cups, which has been a long time. So, yeah. but uh, that's a, a great answer and a great question. Justin Giam over on Twitter would like to know, how do you think the Flyers do during this stretch until the trade deadline? Do they keep up or slide a bit? I mean, it's hard to say, but good God, the way they're playing. Uh, they show up every night. I just think you gotta. it's going to be more positive than negative. I mean, everybody goes through a little uh, slump, if you will, uh, here and there, but... Um, even when they've had a couple, they've bounced right back, and you use the word resilient, and it's it's what they are. Yeah, yeah, and, and resilient, and consistent. I think even in their 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 down parts of the season, there's been more up uh, upside to their downside. So yeah. I mean, they've they've continued to trend upwards, and I would like to think that's going to be kind of consistent the rest yeah. of the way. They're, they'll, they'll they'll drop their games, obviously, but there's going to be more wins than than losses, and they they seem to keep finding new dimensions of of playing and, yeah. and and ability to find ways to win games. So I like the way they're trending. Be a little adversity, but I think yeah. uh, as long as they stay healthy, uh, they'll be fine. I think they'll be fine too. And I just, we've talked about this. We don't need to get into it now, but I think it's going to be interesting coming up to that trade oh, deadline yeah. to see what, see. They got their hands full here and, and big decisions to make there. But uh, yeah, I agree with you. I think uh, if they keep doing what they're doing, which I think they will, I think they're going to be fine. To yeah. Make it. Last one is from Bonzi, Greg Bond over on Instagram. Bonzi, how do you feel about the current All Star Game format? I'll go first, Riggs, because I know you don't agree. I actually don't mind the three on three. I, when I was fortunate enough to do it in 2017, we were we were doing the three on three, and the only thing I don't like, I think, in the first game or two. They don't really give it their all. You know what I mean? Like yeah. they're they're trying to put a show on. For I sure. get it, but like at the end of the day, it's a million dollar. You know, well, a hundred thousand each yeah. to win, which I think is good. But I, I wish they would really like play hard. I know it's it's a different time, but. I don't know. I think it would be better if – I think some teams – like when I was there, we won our first game. Well, we won it. Simmer was the MVP that year, mm-hmm. Wayne Simmons. Uh, but, like, you could see they're kind of floating a little yeah. bit. You know what I mean? And then when you get into the next one, it's more like, oh, shit, like we got to bear down here. Or if the game's close, then both teams start bearing down. It's way more fun to yeah. watch. You know what I mean? So I do like the three-on-three because it's different. But what do you think? I mean, I'm not opposed to three on three. Really, obviously, highlights the incredible skill these guys have. Yeah. But it, it does slow things down. Obviously, you know, historically, all star games have always been a little bit of that, right? But like looking back to when I was growing up and like watching the all star games, 
I didn't realize how much, you know, they were kind of going through the motions. Yeah. These guys are just like cruising yeah. through. They're all stars. I mean, clearly, I mean, yeah. they got the highest skill guys on the ice together. Um, so, I mean, that being said, I understand why they do three on three. And it's just like, it's, it's just, it's to create more goals and yeah. more offense and just more entertainment for the fans. So, I mean, it's not that I'm against it. I guess, you know, I, I I'd like to think even five on five, you could, you know, be yeah. a Harlem Globetrotters out there and still. Oh, make well, some, they were. Well, they mean, were. Yeah. Years ago, like. So, I mean, to, but that being said, I, I think I like, I think it's for probably good for the game just to, you know, to really, yeah. to really show the, the skill uh, of these guys and yeah. generate a little more offense. Well, but. I'll tell you one thing I don't like are the jerseys. No, oh, the, for the, this, this year? year's? For this year. Beebsy? Beebsy. What was First he of all, he takes my my cut, and everybody calls it the Beebs. When I had it before, oh, yeah, he did, he, and you know it's true. Ballers got proof. He did way back before this kid was. I don't even know if he was born you, when I had the Beebs. You Beebs. brought bangs in. I style. brought them. You I brought them. <laughs> I was asking you when I first I met you. Man. I was like, man, I mean, this guy's got a twitch. Or I, got, you got, you, I, I did. You, <laughs> I did have a twitch. It might have been from the or night guys, before. Or, it could have been yeah, from the night, the night before. before yeah. I thought uh, Homer would have told you to cut those bangs. <laughs> 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 get those oh, he did. A number, number of times he made me get a haircut. But uh, no, not a big fan of them this year. They almost look cartoonish or yeah. child. I don't know, whatever. But hey, man, I like you, Beeb. So he was nice to me when I met him. Generated by AI. Yeah, probably. Yeah, probably. pumped it, pumped it through a algorithm, and yeah. that's what we got. Something. NFT. But Debo already has one. Yeah, he was wearing it yesterday. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how you got it that quick. He knows somebody. He knows people. Yeah. Anyway, that's a wrap. Now that's a wrap. Tr. In the books, 143. 143. Can't can you believe it? it? Nope, I cannot. <laughs> Neither can I. I know, because you thought it was 1.30 a little while yeah, ago. Yeah, I know. 1.30 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> happened to the day. Oh, it's been a long day. <laughs> it's been a long day. Well, it has been a long day. I know you got to get rocking here. I do. Dinner time. No, I got a game. <laughs> we got the Rebsies. We got the Maryland Black Bears in uh -oh. The town. Uh-oh. Calm coming? before the storm. You coming? Probably not. You know, Paul, are you coming? Because you win when we <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, he's got a little bit of work. He's got a four-hour pod to record. Yeah, yeah, don't worry about it. He's got it. Well, it's a man. That's a wrap. Until next week for 144. Make sure to be safe. Stay safe, knuckleheads. See ya.